Grenville Dietrich. Now, what would be going through his mind? He let the club down last year. I'm not saying that uh, yeah. by being critical. He admitted it. Yep. But uh, now he's got the job to do. He's out there. He's a couple of minutes away from starting. How would he be feeling? And he's minus his moustache. That probably tells us something. He usually oh, plays right. a game like the, like a boxer with half a stubble of beard around the place. Right. Plus, plus the um, you know, plus the moustache. And I think he's he's dead keen. Oh, is that, is, that the, keen. The, is that the same philosophy as the Mean Machine when they uh, they shave the bodies and away I, they go? Yeah. I, well, I, it's hard to say what philosophy the Grenville uh, adheres to, but I think something along those lines, Pete, that he, he's going to make this his day of days, or he hopes to make it his day of days. And Matt, there's Matthew Campbell. Matt Campbell, the man that you think is pretty fit. I think he's right, Pete, as long as he runs in a straight line. I wouldn't like to see him twist and turn too much, because I do think it might bring him undone with that ankle problem he, he, he's had for some time. Andrew Jarman right alongside him, yep. and of course uh, John Long Riley. Long sleeves Andrew Jarman, I call him. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yep. And. Uh, John Riley, I, I still say, uh, at his best, one of the best halfbacks I've seen. Played a top game in the second semi, Pete. Shut Tony Hall out of the game comprehensively. And he won't, well, he may not have to do that today. Looks as if I'd say he won't have to do it, because we've had the word from people who should know that both sides are going to line up as picked, which surprises me, but then, when I mean, the coach is in charge, he's made that decision, you've got to respect it. Doothy there, and of course he's got the job on Grenville. And you've said quite correctly that uh, Grenville does pretty well against him. Well, when I was coaching, he's going back a bit now. 84, Grenville kicked eight on him down at the bay, and uh, I had to shift, make a shift, <laughs> as any coach would after about seven. Mm. And um, yes, he has got something on Chris Doothy. I think it's bulk. <laughs> In fact, it has to be bulk, Pete, well, because that's right. you know he's such a big, strong lad. If he gets the front spot on Chris, he'll make it very difficult for Chris Doothy to uh, employ his knocking away tactics. Now, Wayne Henwood, he, he's a man that uh, probably the critics would pick at centre-half back, but if yes. we are to believe the pre-match talk, he'll start in the back pocket on the ruckman. Either spot will suit him, Pete. He, he did that back pocket role with a plum last year, and his game in centre-half back last week was great. Yeah, that doesn't mean it will be great this week, because Peter Bennett's a different kettle of fish mm. to the guy he played on last week, Andrew Taylor. I'm not saying he's any better, but he plays a different style of game. He works harder for the front spot. Andrew Taylor likes to mark from behind. It suited Wayne Henwood. Big Peter Carey and... Uh, 406 senior games, a magnificent performance, a great captain. The players love following this big man, and uh, can he do it, though? Absolute inspiration he is, Peter. He was playing in your day, and that's going back a bit now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he's still there. He's an absolute, uh, you know, example of what can be done by a man who really wants to play football, and that's what it's all about. Another important man, Alan Stringer. Now, he's had a few brushes with... Uh, the odd North Adelaide player, a couple of his old teammates? Almost always. You can back it in that Alan Stringer would have an altercation with a North Adelaide player at some stage of the day. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm saying North probably would like to antagonise Alan Stringer and his brother Wayne because they, they have left the club uh, some two and three, oh, th four years ago now. They both left in a sort of a, well, in a half. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's a play up. and they love to play well against their old club. And Peter Maynard, of course, he... Uh, He's not an orthodox uh, run-on player no. uh, by any by any stretch of the imagination. He's on the ball for what 90% of the time, but he's a menace. He can hurt you. And kicks a great goal on the run, Pete. Like you can back Peter Maynard in from 30 to 40 yards out on the run. He kicks it every time. He's one of the best kicks in the Glenelg team, and he's an old teammate of uh, Peter Crackers Keenan. That we right. saw last night. He told us a few stories about it. Oh, <laughs> he should have heard some of them off camera. They were uh, they were great. Now <laughs> this is a fantastic uh, gesture. thing, a gesture for Rick Davies to be involved in. He's going to toss the coin, and of course Rick Davies, one of the all-time greats. Who will forget the grand final in 1976 when he tore Port Adelaide apart, man by man, and of course he holds the record here for the uh, the biggest number of goals kicked by a full forward or by any player, in fact. 151. An outstanding yes. feat. Ah, oh, he's a genius, Rick Davies. Like a lesser player, a lesser player wouldn't have even fronted this year. He's had a very bad back, a debilitating back injury, Pete, but he's he's it's hung in there and. Uh, Kicked over 60 goals this year for his club and will once again was a constant uh, worry to any defence. But he retired over the last four weeks and became a non playing coach, which I'm sure will stand him in good stead for 87. Umpire Rick Kinnear, there, of course, and he's thoroughly deserved uh, this particular game along with, uh, with John Hilton. But uh, Peter Carey there and uh, David yeah, Tiller here in Very comes. important toss, Pete. Is if North win this toss and get a, get a break, I think uh, the game could get away from Glenelg. Oh well, um, we shall see. see how it happens. No, we're going to toss it again. I'm stuck Ooh. in the mud. <laughs> no. Stuck on the edge, eh? He must have spent a bit of time at the casino. Two out of three, the people are thinking. <laughs> oh, he's gone against the breeze. I can't believe it. Peter Carey's gone to the yes. northern end. Um, well, which is the lake the end. Not. <laughs> what was the scoring in the early it's game? Right. Well, it was hard to tell because Norwood yeah, right. won by plenty. Mm. It, was, uh, it was hard to tell, but. Peter Carey is going to the north, uh, and uh, which is to the left-hand side of your screen, and right. of course North Adelaide will go to the south. So uh, it's all set there, and uh, uh, a great build-up to a game, and, and uh, 
the, the thing that we really love during the week, of course, is trying to work out where the teams play. But yeah. of course, we won't know until they line up. Will exactly we? right. And then they line up, they might change in the last half second. <laughs> There's a few tricker, trick, trickeries that uh, Graham Corns indulges in. And yeah. last time they played North at North, they changed Ross Gibbs and Scotty uh, Salisbury with half a second of play to start. Right. They put Gibbs off the field and put Salisbury onto Antipas. Yeah. That was another what you might call unusual one. Well, the other thing, of course, with the interchange uh, as we have it today, I mean, you can make moves do just what you like, like that. You can do what you like, Pete. But initially, I think you'll find that the, the male is both sides of the line-up as picked. Mm. Well, we're getting pretty close now. Uh, the tension builds. The countdown is just about down to zero. And uh, the, the crowd is uh, a little bit hushed at the moment in expectation of, uh, of the commencement of this game, the repeat uh, of last year's grand final. Glenelg destroyed North Adelaide last year with a seven-goal blitz second quarter, late in the second quarter. David Robertson still blaming, blaming himself for dropping that ball uh, at left half-forward flank, running into the uh, what appeared to be an open goal. That enabled North, uh, Glenelg to get right back into it through Stephen Kernahan, in particular at centre-half-forward. McNernan said at a press conference during the week, as far as we're concerned, it's Glenelg one, North Adelaide none, and we want, we want to level the score. He wants to make a one-all, desperately. Yeah. I think his life depends on it as far as Mick's concerned, and I don't blame him. It really sticks in your, in, in, in your gut sometimes, a, a loss in a grand final, and uh, they've waited one long year of football to get back at, well, anybody, but it turns out it's the Bays again. And I don't think that North will in any other way, Pete. If they, if they are to win this premiership, they'd rather beat their tormentors of last year. Than sure. Old. And, of course, uh, North Adelaide's last premiership was in 1972. In fact, they had back-to-back -back premierships, 71-72. Coach at that stage was Mike Patterson, and, of course, the great Barry Robin was part of that team, which made it just a fraction easier uh, to win a game of football. But uh, North Adelaide these days, a stack full of champions. Glenelg as well, so uh, that, that augurs uh, well for a great game of footy. I wonder where that bruise is, is blowing, Peter. It's got a bit of way Peter, Peter, Mark, uh, Peter uh, Kerry went, because he wouldn't go against the bruise, not, not in the grand final. That looks a bit limp, that, uh, that flag there. So, it's definitely limp. Yeah, I hope it is, because I don't want to see any sort of wind help or hinder either side. Mm, no, I'd agree with that. Uh, great crowd here, packed audience, sold out for a couple of weeks. There's Peter Couples, who uh, is waiting to uh, come on to sing the national anthem to get this big game underway. There's the bench players, Pete, Scott Salisbury and um, uh, Rod Kidney, are definitely mm. on the bench for Glenelg. So, uh, Ross Gibbs is going to start off in the back pocket, and uh, we're getting ready now for Peter Couples to get proceedings underway with the national anthem. Ready to us now for the 1986 Grand Final and uh, your commentators, David Darcy and Ian Day. It's a packed house for the 1986 Grand Final. Ideal weather conditions. What a day for football. Hardly any breeze. Kerry has won the toss, kicking to the left of the screen. And the big fella gets the first kick away up towards the half-forward line. Robertson back in defence. Marshall through. Edges the ball into the half-forward line. North under pressure at the moment. Riley back in defence. Whips out a handball. Thump further forward there on the half-forward line. It's the base. Taken by Sanders. Left leg back in field. The umpire has seen a free kick. It's going the way of North Adelaide. And it'll be taken on the half back flank. Taken back there by Darrell Hart, the North Adelaide Rover. Unbelievable conditions. A fine looking kick up towards centre wing. Carey over the top, can't bring it down. Parsons quickly in, but Carey's given away a free kick. And Parsons will take the first one for North Adelaide from centre wing. He'll put them into attack now as into the pocket he goes looking for Redden. Hedman started in the back pocket. Carey hit heavily and high. 
Tom Hill take the free. Goes into River Street with Andrews. Carey's got the free, no 15 metre paid. So the big fella in the back pocket. But loved by good old fans. Not so by the opposition, but he's been a tremendous player, playing his 406th game today, Peter Carey. Parsons towards Redden again. Here's a chance at the back, although the umpire sorted a free kick out. And it's Carey once more on the receiving end of it. Third kick already to Carey. He started very well. He's got a mammoth job to do today. Jumping against both Parsons and Redden. The pass is good. Donovan's got it at centre-half back. Tremendous atmosphere at the start of the 86 grand final. Stringer oh, unloaded by Robertson. Stringer's off, unperturbed, goes towards half forward. It wobbles a bit. Lucky bounce for Hodgman. Tried to get it to Hall, but couldn't. Clisby intercepts well. He'll get a free now. The umpire's calling it on. Chance now for North Adelaide to get clear. Campbell's into the space. Off he goes. The left foot kick is towards the pocket. Penrith getting back for the Tigers. No pressure applied, and they're out of defence. Penwood's booted it back to centre wing, but getting under the ball is Sanders. Didn't take the mark. Play it on, though. Sanders with left boot to the ball, hooks it back. Cruz is there, but oh, Redden on his own. Peter Bennett shepherded very well. Redden plays it on. Out comes Duthie and Marks unattended. Grenville Dietrich a long way behind him, and the ball goes out to Henwood. He's in the back pocket. The Glenelg side is uh, play or picked as published. Tony Hall, a big mark on centre wing. Did he fall over or was he touched? The umpire said he's going to report him. There is a report in the opening minutes of the game. We'll watch it in replay. Clisby, the man, reported. For what? I'm not quite sure. It, uh, Seemed a bit soft. Off hands. McDermott couldn't get boot to ball. Robertson. Hart's got the ball now for North Adelaide. He goes down towards centre wing. Cruz, was he pushed? According to umpire Hilton, he was. Oh, it's on. Players just getting a little anxious in the opening minutes of the 86 grand final. Let's have a look at it again. It's against Peter Bennett. But hang on, now he's won the ball. Bennett drives him into attack. Up towards Dietrich. Getting back in with the ball on the ground. Quickly a chance for North Adelaide. The Ants with the ball now. 35 metres out. Puts in a long one. Carey back on his lonesome. Can he get there? I think he's missed it. Yes, it's a goal. Brilliantly done, the end. Desperate lunge by Carey. Not successful. And North Adelaide are on their way. Well, Peter Bennett got the ball back. The Glenelg defenders made the mistake. And here he is. Tony Andrews tore through half forward. Got under the ball a touch. And uh, Peter Carey couldn't quite make it. It just went through. So North Adelaide have got the first score. They're a goal. Glenelg get to score. Four minutes into the quarter. Been a brilliant opening to the 86 grand final. Carey got unloaded. Alan Stringer the chance now to kick the base forward. It's high towards Copping. Under a cloud during the week. Hart for North Adelaide. Forced onto the left foot. Searches out wide. Bennett and Cruz. Well done, Max Cruz. He's got clear of Bennett. The kick towards half forward again. Copping. Well, that looked good, but the umpire seen an infringement. It's a push in the back against Tony Hall, I believe. Clisby the offender again. Now, Clisby's already been reported in this match. Maynard, taken by Robertson. Back after four weeks. Bennett the chance. He's going to get caught by Simons. No, he gets a kick forward. Chance for Donovan in front. Point at the back. Well, Simons went in high. And Point will get the free at half forward. And umpire Kinnear has gone in to talk to Tony Simons. No report. Here it is again. Pretty crude tackle. As the kick from Point and goes towards the square. Andrew Jarman on the ground. Wayne Stringer's back there. And there'll be a throw in in the right forward pocket. The tackle was shades of Scotty Salisbury. A wonderful... As... What a shot. A magnificent scene down here at Football Park in the 86th Grand Final. Coming to you on Seven's Big League. Free kick going the way to Carey. Carey at centre-half back almost, or as he pushes it out towards Simons. Big leap, Campbell not successful. Simons close to the line, edges it back. Not well taken, or not well kicked. Parsons, the kick away is good and finds the end in the right forward pocket. 
He's about 45 metres out from goal. His best kick will make the distance. Puts it on its way. Gee, it's going to be close. Big leaping in the square. Up over the top. It's claimed by Redden. But the umpire seen a free kick going against North Adelaide. And Super Carey will get yet another free kick in defence. That was against uh, Grenville Dietrich. But when he got up off the ground, he said to the umpire, I got pushed first. I'm not quite sure that that was the case. And the fine kick out by Carey finds Donovan. Donovan's deep in defence for Glenelg. And he might reach centre wing with a good kick. Tony Hall's the man behind. Robertson in front. Oh, that's good touch. Been out of the game for a long time, but uh, he started this game well. Hart is short, but he'll go longer than that. Gibbs comes across. It goes over the top. Poynton thought about the handball. Back onto that dangerous left boot. Hooks it way back now. Grenville Dietrich won't mark it. Henwood will. He's deep in the back pocket there on the right-hand side. He'll relieve the pressure now for the Bays, and they've been under pressure in the last two or three minutes. The kick to the outer side. McDermott up high. David Kernahan back after concussion. Slips it to Marshall. Here's a chance for the Bays to build. Hall needs a decent bounce. He didn't get one. Taps it back in the direction of Stringer. Or well, Jarman hit high. McDermott went in strongly. Hilton sorts out a three. It's going North Adelaide's way. And David Sanders will take it at centre wing. He'll put them into attack. Towards half forward. Parsons is his target. But the back carry... He got a big hand on it and put it out of play. So it's North Adelaide a goal. The Bays haven't scored as we go past seven minutes of the first quarter. Half forward, left flank, throw in. Carey in front. Try to get it down. Robertson can't find the footing. Kernahan likewise. A line ball on the umpire in for a bounce. Half forward, left flank. Very little breeze. Conditions about 20 degrees. Ideal for football, but there'll be some tired players afterwards. McDermott tries to get it out. It's Carey. Finally comes out now to Stringer. Long handball looking for Simons. He's going to have to work hard for that. Got Moan into the ground, and he'll get a free kick at centre-half back. Quickly plays onto the base. Out wide is Gibbs. He's got time to have a look. Puts out the pass. Beautifully pit, although waiting for it was Hall. He had to wait for the bounce. Donovan cleverly to Hall. The running player now is Wayne Stringer. Half forward line. Hodgman duck the chuck. He's gone. Free kick goes the way, a big pass. Well, he's uh, well done by Parsons too, and Wayne Stringer is hurt. Uh, he caught one, and he doesn't look too flash at the moment. Gibbs waits down and takes the mark. No, nope. pushing the back, says umpire Kinnear. Bennett, the recipient. Hart runs into the pocket. Bennett will go that way. Now Hart and Gibbs. Gibbs can outmark anybody his own size. Another push in the back. Well, I don't think Gibbs agreed with that one. You see it in screen. On the lead, Grenville Dietrich, he's got it! The big chap has got his first chance to boot one in this grand final. And that uh, was very well put too by Hart. The big Grenville there, cutting across in front of Peter Carey, has a chance about 45 metres out on a 45 degree angle. Andrew Jarman appears to be limping, he's in the pocket. Grenville Dietrich lines it up. 45 metres out. He's dragged that one across. Oh, a big pack of players leaping there. Henwood's on the bottom of the pack. Umpire Kinnear will come in, separate players and bounce it. Now, the run has gone out to Andrew Jarman. I wouldn't be surprised if that's... It appears to be the right leg. Could be a hamstring or perhaps a cork thigh as Poynton misses by plenty. It's out of bounds and... Uh... This is Wayne Stringer. He got rid of it and he got unloaded. And he was pretty groggy there for some time. But he looks OK at the moment. Andrew Jarman doesn't. He's at centre-half forward at the moment and limping a bit. Henwood, who started in the back pocket after a brilliant game at centre-half back last week. Carey almost, but not paid. Parsons went in strongly. Cruz tries to get to, try to get it out and couldn't. So there'll be a bounce at centre-half forward. Just one score in the match and we've had about ten minutes. That was a goal to North Adelaide. It came from Antrobus. Trying to get it clear was Roberts, and he's caught and lost it. McDermott gets it back to Maynard. Maynard goes towards centre wing. Parsons up. Hall got a hand on it. Coming through strongly, Clisby. Tried to get it to Antrobus, but Hall did a good job. He's kept it in the area. Oh, McDermott forgot about the ball and went it straight at Roberts and missed him, fortunately. And the umpire into bounce again. 
Noonan lost by 57 points last year in the, the match against the Vase. Can they do better today? I reckon so, David. Only time will tell. The player's going in very hard. Maynard gives a chance out wide. Kernahan, a long one to the half forward line. Out there is coughing. Ball thump, clear of that player. And it'll be thrown in on the half forward right flank. The Bay haven't been into attack very often in the first 11 minutes. North have been doing most of it. But they've only got one scoring shot to show for it. Guard on against Parsons. Guard on in there. Can't get it clear. Riley comes out with it, Stephen Riley, finally onto the boot of Sanders, up towards centre wing, working hard for it is Bennett, now Tiller, fight behind play, Tiller hits a long one of the half four line, getting underneath it back there, is Donovan, Donovan towards the line and the ball goes out of play, but in the meantime there's a melee back on the half forward, right flank for the Bays, and players line up, I didn't see what happened, Peter Marker. Oh, I, I saw something there, uh, Ian, that I'd, I'd rather not talk about, to be quite honest. Wasn't too flash. Donovan for the Bays, just in front of the scoreboard there. Mick Redden cuts across. Oh, North Adelaide players up. No calling, really. Glenelg easily. Hall. He got it from Hodgman. Short. Here's a chance for the Bays and a good mark out in front by Garton. Glenelg players running everywhere. Bit of looseness here by North Adelaide and Tony Simons takes it easily. Another Glenelg player a little bit groggy there, that's Maynard, but uh, I wouldn't think you need to worry a great deal about that. So Tony Simons has a chance to level the score for Glenelg. 30 metres out. Only a slight angle. Normally a great kick. No exception on that occasion, straight through the centre. Well, it was a great goal from the Bays. It was a good build-up. The dust-up uh, wasn't good on the outer side. In fact, it was very bad. Some incidents that we shouldn't be talking about, and we won't, in fact. But a great goal to Tony Simons, and he's levelled the score at one goal each. Stringer sends the Bays into attack. Fine mark. And the Bay's starting to fire now. Simons goes into the pocket, but Garton doesn't want him. He's going to shoot for home. Fine mark in front of the pack. He's about 45 to 50 metres out from goal. Very little breeze. Might be into it just a fraction. The kick is a nice looking kick. It's a drop punt, but it's offline. Will not come back far enough. And the Bay's register their first point. They lead North Adelaide 1 1 to a goal. Garton booted that ball 60 metres then, so. Uh... You look at the flags around the ground, some of them are motionless. Not a lot of breeze here. Parsons on the outer side of the ground. David Kernahan in hot pursuit. He put it over the top late. Oh, Kernahan trapped it. Here's a chance for the Bays again. Super Carey's got the chance. Now Hodgman. And David Robertson comes in late. There are loose players everywhere. There's Maynard. Antibus was way behind that player. Maynard will play it on now. Hall's the chance. Two players up, but Hall takes it in front of Copping. And Tony Hall now a chance to put Glenelg further in front. A lot of looseness by North Adelaide. They, uh, they give you a chance to score, I can tell you that. The way they play the game, it's all attack. When it falls over the top, the road home's pretty simple. Hall's pushed it off to the right, a touch. But he's got a goal with it. An excellent goal by Tony Hall, but some looseness in that North Adelaide defence. Where was Clisby? He was a long way behind Hall. It was a good pass from Maynard, however, and the Bays have looked good. They've settled down. They're 2-1 now. North Adelaide are a goal. The difference is seven points, and we've had about 15 minutes of the first quarter. The end has a chance to send North Adelaide into attack he's going to get a free kick from centre field North Adelaide down now one goal to two one the ant from the centre circle tried to get around Marshall or well, the handball to Sanders wasn't good likewise Riley put him under pressure now Jarman Andrew time out comes Dietrich oh what a beautiful pass well if there was anything wrong with his leg it certainly put a lie to it then although it was the left leg he kicked with and he is limping but it was a beautiful pass and Dietrich 
Tucker's got it 25 metres out, 45 degree angle. The big fellow missed with his first effort. It was the other side and a little further out. Right now, a goal would be a big confidence booster. That awkward kicking style, and it's produced a point on this occasion. Grenville's had two shots for a point. North Adelaide 1-1, one, one. Glenelg 2-1. Grenville apparently has been training every night recently. <laughs> Maybe overtrained, Pete. <laughs> perhaps, uh, perhaps you might be right. Centre wing. Stringer in front. Good body positioning. The umpire's about to give him a free kick. He didn't need it. Max Cruz picked it up. Kicked it up to half forward. That went straight over the head of Tony Hall. Oh, Riley's handball was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant to Darren Jarman. He goes through centre wing and he'll boot long to centre half forward. Super Carey cuts him off though. Plays it straight on to Hodgman. Oh, Maynard's on his own. So is Marshall. It's all set up here if Marshall sets it up. He goes short. Marshall's got it. It looked pretty obvious from the time that Hodgman got the ball that Marshall was going to get it down there in the forward pocket. And those North Adelaide defenders again were all running forward. And uh, as I've mentioned before, that can cause great problems. Peter, they've got to be working some movement down there that is befuddling the, uh, the North Adelaide defence because, as you say, it's here, there and everywhere, but not on a player. Well, North Adelaide defenders all running forward in to get into the action and uh, they're just loose. It's as simple as that. Marshall, normally a great kick at goal. He got a point on that occasion. But the Bay's looking good. 2-2 to North Adelaide, 1-1. One, one. 17 and a half minutes gone. Very little breeze to talk about. Kerry won the toss and elected to go to the lake end of Football Park. Perhaps, if anything, the breeze may be going that way. Kick in from Arnold. Mark almost played, but not. Andrew Jarman gets clear. Here's a chance for North Adelaide now. Stephen Riley's on the end of that pass. He can bounce his way through centre wing. McDermott won't catch him. Coming to meet McDermott is Robertson. The kick now from Stephen Riley heads towards Dietrich. Doothy with him. Hart goes after it. Gets held without it. He's going to get the free. Doothy's not happy. There was no doubt that Darrell Hart was being held without the ball. And he's got it 30 metres out directly in front a chance for the evener. There he is. Doothy's got him. Hart was trying to get back on the ball and Doothy held on to him. So Hart, 30 metres out, directly in front. Kick is true. His first goal. A fine running movement by Riley and he was well shepherded. McDermott went down on the tackle but the ball went up to the forward line and I suppose it's an interpretation as what it meant by being in possession of the ball. But whatever, Hart won the free kick for holding on. He booted his first, the Northerners second. Back to the action, the Bays 2-2, North Adelaide 2-1. And uh, North Adelaide really needed that one. They were starting to wallow a little bit. The whistle's gone. It took an elk free kick. Carey's got it. Won't hold on to it for long either. Away they go. Copping on a lead. He's got it. Whoop. First time I've seen John Riley do that sort of thing. And a big mistake by John Riley. He didn't come back quick enough. Stephen Copping now has got a chance to boot a goal for the Bays. And uh, they don't really help your side too much when you do that. I don't really think North have started this game that well, to be quite honest. They've uh, just made some errors. Unnecessary errors. Popping took advantage and booted his first goal. The Bays 3 2, North 2 1. Well, there's no doubt that North Adelaide defence is somewhat befuddled. There's some frustrate, frustration creeping into them. Look at John Riley. Ball had that, uh, Copping had that for a long time before that arm came around, and uh, from there, Stephen Copping made no mistake. North defence somewhat rattled. The Bays in front. They're 3 2. To North Adelaide's 2-1. Redden at the centre bounce against Carey. The reverse of what happened last year. North started well and the Bays not so well. The Bays are firing on all four at the moment, but it's well taken on the half-back line there by Riley. Wildy. Stephen Riley. Riley from half-back flank looking for Bennett. One-handed. Cruises there. Sanders and Kernahan close to the line. Sanders keeps it in play. Whips out a handball. Bennett. Running 
strong support. Gets it from Jarman. The slide of hand is on. Back now, hard over the half four line. Go North Adelaide. Getting into it is Jarman and Tom Hurley almost pulled it down. Can't quite get it. Out it comes now towards the half forward line. Robertson looks on. I don't think the big leap came from Poynton. I think it was. Uh, it could have been. It might have been Matthew Campbell. But at any rate, the ball is on the half-forward line. Bounce down. 3-D to 2-1. Parsons against Carey. Stringer couldn't. Hart looking for somewhere to go. Puts out the handball out wide now. Jarman in turn inside his brother. Darren shoots for goal. The umpire goes galloping, and that's out on the foot. Well, he's good enough to kick those, Darren Jarman. But uh, on that occasion, a long way away. duthie has got the kick back. Gibbs leads for him short, but I think he might... Aim for the target, Peter Carey. Carey tries to make front spot against Redden, but he didn't need it. David Kernahan took the mark, and uh, now the Glenelg player's moving. Simons did that run from a long way away. Matt Campbell didn't worry about it, and uh, they're very loose, North Adelaide. Very, very loose. McDermott, Maynard, uses the left boot to go forward. Two and a half forward we are now. That's a mark. Tony Hall. Oh, he's a menace. Certainly worrying Clisby. In fact, he'd worry anybody. So Tony Hall has it at centre-half forward. He's booted one. An exciting player. Fourth kick. He's now booted two. 4-2 the Bays. North 2-1. Yes, he's uh, causing real problems for Trevor Clisby at the moment. Tony Hall, his mobility, his ability to get out on his own, and uh, the pass there was a superb one. Clisby uh, maybe being changed now. I think John Riley's coming over onto Tony Hall. That's a good move. It was warranted because Clisby was in real trouble. 4-2 the Bays, North Adelaide at 2-1. The centre bounce, the ball comes towards Robertson, he can't get clear, Maynard back in defence, quickly put forward by Darren Jarman, the bounce could determine, the ant trying to get it to point, not successful, Wayne Stringer to the outer side, Riley leads in the race to the ball, the bounce favoured Marshall, he didn't have the footy and he's going to get a free kick for hanging on. David Marshall having a good first quarter to put the Bays into attack from centre wing, he gets a lead from uh, half forward line from the Maynard, that's the way the ball travels, he can't get it down, quickly the Bays go back in again through David Kernahan. Hall, bad bounce, John Riley back in defence, seeks the aid now of Tiller, hooks a high one, centre wing, Bennett against Cruz, out goes Cruz, but he's going to get a free kick, and the Bays centre half back will get it from check side centre wing. Uh, errors galore, North Adelaide, they've Quite extraordinary. You can't win playing footy like that. They're going to have to change plan totally. Marshall got the handball to Carey. The Bay's running rings around North Adelaide at the moment. Copping waits back, but it's taken off him by Wildey. He gets thrown away too. And uh, Wildey will finally get up now and uh, take his kick. Certainly well judged. He's a tall man, David Wildey, and he did that very well. Goes to the outer side. Kick was lazy. Maynard got across there and uh, nearly took a one-hander, but he took it over the line. So North Adelaide have certainly got to improve. John Riley's gone on to Tony Hall. Wildey's on to Copping. Carey's winning in ruck. And generally around the field, North Adelaide appear to be slack. They don't want to tackle, they don't want to chase, and they're making errors. Talking about errors, there's a free kick to Darren Jarman. He'll we'll put them into attack, and they need some scores. We're into time on. Ball's got to come back. Darren Jarman has got to come back over his mark. Hart was clear at centre half forward, but umpire Kinnear had judged that it had to come back over the mark. So Darren Jarman goes short to the boundary line. Bennett out in front of Cruz takes the easy mark. Now he can go over the top and he has elected to. Chance for Sanders as he bangs it in towards the square. Dietrich up with Parsons. Off hands. Chance at the back, but it's out of the reach of Michael Parsons and through. For a point, north to 2-2, two -two, the Bays lead 4-2. Gibbs does the kicking in. Gets a lead, grandstand side, Simons and Wayne Stringer. He's got Donovan all on his lonesome centre-half back. Another loose checking effort. He's going to wander off through that spot, looking to pass off. He goes long, a ground-covering kick. Ball up there, thumps away from Riley, but in doing so, he's given away a free kick. And the North Adelaide centre-half back at the moment, having started on a half-back flank, will take the kick from that spot. 
John Riley. A nice looking kick to the half four line. Looking up there for Red Nandor Bennett. Well taken. Cruz whips out a handball. McDermott. Simons. Good football. Hodgman will get it next. Out wider is Maynard. The base loose on the half four line ago. Maynard has one bounce. Puts in a long one. And that's a ripper goal. Brilliantly done, Peter Maynard. Goal number one. Kick number five. The base running away in this first quarter, leading 5 2 to 2 2. Well, a string of handballs to Maynard, and he, he's a menace. He can hurt you, and there's nothing. Well, no one that can kick a running goal better than Peter Maynard. He never misses. He's a very, very valuable and effective player. And the Bays know how to use him. And away he goes to kick the Bays' fifth goal and his first. And uh, McNeenan, you've got some problems at the moment. Has he ever? 32 points, plays 14, Glenelg in top. It's been a very good quarter by them. They just outplayed North Adelaide, outpositioned them, outrun them. Just totally outgeneraled them. John Riley's handball is a good one to run and see. He's going to run himself into trouble, but he's good enough to get out of it. Wasn't retarded. The handball on the Darren Jarvin. Slips it back to Robertson. Here's a go for the Roosters. Robertson's kick is a brilliant one. Third at his first. North 3-2. The Bays 5-2. Well, that's the type of goal that will be remembered in years to come in grand finals. A brilliant solo effort. Almost did too much. A little lucky to get away from the tackle then of Hodgman. But played on well, butted up on the double play. Had players running with him, but decided to go it alone. A brilliant kick from 35 metres out. And North Adelaide kicked their third. 3-2, they trail Glenelg 5-2. A real team lifter. Great play by David Robertson. Out of the game for a long time. Mick Redden in ruck. Peter Carey's been there all quarter. Probably be there all day too, knowing Suba. Hodgman got the handball away. Tony Hall, fantastic handball. Simons, Seabone's got the charge from behind, couldn't quite mark it, Maynard again, oh he's put it through, Maynard's booted his second goal, the Bays have got six, North Adelaide, 3-2, they're trying by plenty and there's a fight on, it's to be expected, we're going to see plenty of those today David. Yes we are and that's an incredible goal from Peter Maynard and is still going on behind play, let's have a look at it in replay. Seabone, Maynard hooked it back somehow with that left foot. How he got it through that tight angle, I'll never know. But that fight still continues, and the umpire's having plenty of trouble at the moment. Maynard, after kicking it, was put down, in fact. And from there, it's developed. Finally, they've settled down. But at the end of it, the Bays are well in control. They now lead by three goals. Maynard's booted his second. He's gone for the towel, obviously bleeding fairly profusely from that left eye. I don't think he's bleeding at all David, I don't think it was bad as it looked from my point of view, but Maynard certainly made it look bad. He's not bleeding at all but nevertheless he achieved what he set out to do. He kicked a goal, he's booted two and the Bays are on their merry way. 6-2 to 3-2. Well can they score again before quarter time? By the club, Bennett no, holding it to him so umpire Kinnear will bounce it. A rebounce. 3-2, North Adelaide, the Bay 6-2. A fantastic start to Glenelg. And I think a few North Adelaide players have been sucked in, to be quite uh, honest with you. Oh, well done, Stringer, Marshall, Kernahan. Yes, the whistle's gone. The free after disposal. Maynard's loose again. He always is. He's going to get it again, Maynard. Who on earth is on him? Stephen Riley's the man that ran in late. He thought about uh, Simons, thinks about him again. Thank you very much. Well, wow. McNernan has always said that uh, if you kick more than the opposition, you win the game. So they're going to find it hard to do that the way they're playing. That's the North Bench. It's pretty dark in there at the moment. Tony Simons. 30 metres out, two goals, Simons. North, 3-2, the Bays, 7-2. Well, 
Well, they're very ragged, that North Adelaide side. They just cannot get near it. Tiller was undecided then. Maynard had Simons in the first instance. Tiller saw him but left him. And Simon stayed where he was. Maynard finally saw him and got the pass to him. Been a top performance by the Bays. A brilliant start. North Adelaide looked very, very tardy indeed. The difference now is 24 points, and we've gone past. We approach 31 minutes of the first quarter. I agree, David. It's unbelievable. North Adelaide is supposed to have the best defence in the league, but at the moment the Bays have got it in tatters. They go into attack on this occasion through Darren Jarman. This is North Adelaide up towards Big Parsons, but it's well taken by Gibbs. Didn't get his feet off the ground. Siren sounds. A brilliant first quarter by Glenelg. They've won the toss in a quarter time in the 1986 Grand Final. Glenelg 7-2, lead North Adelaide 3-2. Quarter time here at Football Park. The Bay 7-2, North Adelaide 3-2. A sensational first quarter which saw Clisby reported for allegedly striking Tony Hall. I think that's the way it went. There didn't appear to be much in it, but there were fights all over the ground, Graham. Yeah. Do you think North Adelaide was sucked in? No, I don't, Pete. I just think it was a combination of players grappling with each other. I mean, you'll find the game still went on regardless of the fights. That's what mm. pleases me about the two-umpire system. Even though there is a blue or two, the game still continues with the other umpire while the other one sorts out what's happening. But, uh, gee whiz, it's just what North didn't want. Mm. The base to get their tails up early. And vice versa, if the North have got, got their tail up, they're going to be lamenting at the moment. But they've got the run of the ball at the moment. They've had loose men running forward to the play, and they're doing it easy. There are certain things that can lift games in grand finals, of course, and... Uh, Sometimes great goals lift teams. Now, David Robertson tore away and uh, mm. executed a magnificent goal, but I, I suppose the tackle let him off the hook. Yep. Um, I think it was a Kim Hodgman had the he chance. He just shook himself loose, you'll find. He was almost holding the ball. Uh, he grabbed him, just slipped loose, and fended across, took it back, and it was a really great grand final goal. I thought that might have been a lifter for North, mm. but almost immediately. Uh, the reply was Peter Maynard kicking a left foot snap, which was worth going miles to see Peter. He, uh, he got pole axed as he kicked it, it appeared, but uh, he was wasn't too, too concerned, I don't think. The North, the North Adelaide players just don't appear uh, prepared to stand right. their opposition players, but uh, we'll see how it pans out in this very important second quarter with uh, Dave Darcy and Ian Day. Peter, well, quarter time, 7-2 to 3-2, and what a marvellous effort by the Bays in that first turn. Can North Adelaide fight back? The carry kick with the breeze. Are the questions to be answered? North Adelaide will certainly have to tighten. Parsons against Carey. Carey won that one. Well, Matthew Campbell overran it badly. Alan Stringer slips it to McDermott. They're into attack again. Garten the chance. Being well pressured by Clisby. John Riley tackled a little high and he'll take it at half back. Tony Hall had a very good first quarter. So well did he play, in fact. Of a swing there from Wildy. So well did Hall play in that first quarter that Riley was shifted onto him and Clisby went into the back pocket. Cruz taps it forward, but he's lost it. Bennett's got it. Now Parsons. Dedrick on the lead. Duthie from behind. Gives it the back to do the mopping up. Wastes no time. Gets a kick away into the open territory at half back. Long chase for Henwood. Well, cutting across him and doing well with Sanders, but he's pushed it out of play. So there'll be a throw in at half forward left. North Adelaide slightly into attack. Nothing in the breeze at all. To all intents and purposes, the Bays kicked into it in the first quarter. Didn't make any difference to them. They kicked 7-3, holding or 7-2, holding the ball against Antrobus. And the free kick taken by Henwood on the half-back flank. Henwood playing in the back pocket, standing the resting Ruckman, either Redden or Parsons, as Henwood goes to the half-forward line. Parsons couldn't, Simons can. Whips out a long handball hit and hope that one. Oh, comes on to Marshall. He bumps towards goal one, bounce 30 metres, closing. Puts it on its way. It's another goal! Brilliantly done. Marshall's first goal. The Bay's having a brilliant early part of the 1986 Grand Final lead, 8-3. Correction, 8-2 to 3-2. Well, if they've heard in the first quarter, North Adelaide, they were certainly hurt by that. There may have been some suggestion that the Bays were going to the scoring end in the first quarter, but the breeze, or the indications of the breeze, don't seem to suggest that. Marshall never misses in that position. 8-2 to 3-2. 30 points the difference. Parsons up, got over the top of Carey on that one. Robertson fumbling. Stephen Riley left it behind and Robertson with a short kick but the Bays have come out again. David Kernahan searches for copying. He's out in front. Couldn't mark it. Hodgman rode well. Now Maynard. He's been dangerous. Hooks in with the left foot. Oh, magnificent goal! 
Bay's on fire. Maynard Bucci serve. Tremendous performance. 8-2, 9-2 now the Bay's, 3-2 North Adelaide. What an unbelievable effort there by Peter Maynard. He booted three, and each one of them has been positively brilliant. Had seven kicks. He snapped one from the forward pocket. He snapped the left footer then. He had that brilliant long running shot at goal in the first quarter. And are the Tigers ever on fire? They lead by 36 points. Can North Adelaide get a couple back as Hart takes them up to half forward? Andrews from behind. No mark taken. Through goes Andrew Jarman. Got the ball out miraculously. Through goes McDermott. Over the top, Parsons. Hard again. They've got a steady North Adelaide. They've got to start finding players. Andrew Jarman, Darren Jarman. Deep in the forward pocket though. Couldn't score from there. Centres the ball. Redden from behind. Can't get near it. Duthie, David Kernahan. Glenelg are going to come out of trouble again. Maynard's got the ball on a string. Grenville ran way down from fullback. That'll go over Robertson. Parsons and Hall. Now Marshall. The Bay players really hyped up. They appear to be running faster. They're doing things. Hodgman just keeps it in. Tony Hall comes back. Tiller, Parsons. Tiller gets a handball away, which went out of bounds. Well, they're chasing jumpers at the moment, North Adelaide. They're in trouble. Six goals down. Four minutes into the second quarter. They can get no system going whatsoever. Throw in Tony Hall, who's played a great game. Hart. It's tackled well by Hodgman. Well, Robertson runs himself into trouble, but Riley supports. John Riley chips in short to half forward. Bennett had it and lost it, but he got a push in the back. And he'll take it at centre wing. Max Cruz was the offender. Bennett didn't know for a second there that he was going to get the free. But he's got it OK, and he'll put North into attack. They need goals and need them quickly now. Having difficulty getting any cohesion into their play at all. Can't find a winner in attack. Bennett coming a long way up the ground for his kicks. Carey's lurking at half-back. Donovan read it well. McDermott playing well. Boots it back towards centre wing. Tony Hall! Superb mark. Maynard's loose. Simons wants it. Pass is excellent. Simons can get all the way here. 30 metres out. Oh, brilliant football. You won't see any better football than that anywhere. Simons kicks three. The Bay's on fire. 10-2 to North Adelaide. 3-2. This is unbelievable football by Glenelg. They're pinpointing the passes brilliantly. That one from Maynard actually hit Simons when he was flat as a strap. He didn't break stride and booted a most magnificent goal. And Glenelg's first quarter and six minutes has been the best football that I've seen all season. 10-2, they lead North Adelaide 3-2. That's seven goals. McNoonan. Peter Carey in the centre, got the big thump away. McDermott punched it on. Tony Hall out to Simons. When will a North Adelaide player touch the ball? Garten's in the forward pocket. Put the hand out. The ball didn't quite stick. A couple of players in there fighting for it. And the umpire will bounce it. Wops warming up. Campbell off. Well, sensations here at uh, Football Park. Matt Campbell, one of the stars of the side, coming off very early. What for? The kick out of defence. Oh, there's no one there for North Adelaide. Maynard will get it again. Maynard never misses on the run. Having said that, he'll go short this time to Hall. And uh, really, I don't think I've ever seen a grand final like this. North Adelaide totally and utterly rattled. Club onto the ground as uh, Tony Hall shapes up for his third goal. They're having a feast up there, the forwards. Tony Hall's just booted his third. 11-2, got help, North Adelaide 3-2. Oh, once again, how easy for the Bays, and they are just doing it in a cakewalk at the moment. Matthew Campbell's off at the moment. He does tend to, when he runs, to be a little prop in his action at the best of times, but certainly as he came off, there was an indication of a leg injury there. Kim Klomp's on. They need a spark. Can he provide it? They're eight goals down, seven minutes into the second quarter, and it's really doubtful, Ian, whether they can get back from here. 
Michael Noonan has huge problems, and I agree with David Darcy. I think the game could be over, but see how good North Adelaide is now. It will be a test of uh, their courage and their character if they can get back into this. Down eight in a grand final is a huge task. Up towards Dietrich. Uses his strength, can't get it clear. Stringer, hard. In they go. Cruise over the top. McDermott waits the outcome, and the umpire will come into bounce. Shades of the VFL grand final. The Bays with all the players at the ball, just brushing aside, just brushing the... North Adelaide players aside. McDermott jams it onto the boot. Drives out to the outer side. Simons trying to get it back in the one-two. Now it's Antrobus. He goes through the half-forward line. He's too far out to score. Big Super's back in defence. Rock of Gibraltar takes the easy mark. Grenville just couldn't get near the ball. Who's Super going to kick it to? That's really the question. Puts a high ball out there. There are players jumping all over the place. And Parsons takes the mark. Thinks about a handball. Peter Carey had Donovan clear on that occasion, but didn't use him. Max Cruz couldn't mark the ball. Point and a chance. Can he hook that one around? Oh, magnificent kick. Fantastic goal, Pointon. His first. North Adelaide 4-2. The Bays 11-2. Yes, indeed. A superb goal from Michael Pointon. A belated one for the North Adelaide side. The difference is seven points. He snared it well off the ground and uh, without looking, really, just... Put it on the angle and banged it through. His first, they needed it badly. They trailed by seven goals at the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. Well, North Adelaide have got the skill and the running ability to get back into the game, but they're going to have to produce it shortly. Time will tell. Carey again, McDermott ended. Goes through Riley, and Riley's going to get a legging free kick on the edge of the square. Now, I don't know whether he can take it. The leg came across. It would have hit him about the shin, I would think, and it hurts. And the grey-headed one gets up, hobbling. He gave the handball away. It was a shocker. He had to go back and get it himself. Out wide is the big fellow in Parsons. He's got Carey to beat. Puts a long one in towards the pocket. Poynton's there. Thumped away by Donovan. Here's a chance. Hart. Right forward pocket. Hooks it back. Redden gets in there. Thumped away from Redden. Close to the line. Getting back on it is Henwood. He's quite happy to concede the point. And North Adelaide moved to 4-3. Glenelg 11-2. Can North Adelaide get back? That's the big question. I'll have to do plenty. Henwood to boot it off. Parsons. Oh, he went up too early. Carey, Simons. Simons with the run of it. Really waste the ball. No one wants to stand, Maynard. The hairball wasn't a good one. Simons concedes 30 metres to Peter Carey. He'll try and pick someone out. Wayne Stringer. Just got his kick away. A chance for Alan Stringer. Tony Hall couldn't take the mark. Robertson there jumping all over the ball. And, uh, oh, he did. He jumped more, more than just over the ball. He gave away a free kick. Alan Stringer. He bounced the ball then. That sometimes is play on, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. 11-2, Glenelg. 4-3, North Adelaide. Marshall now left half forward flank. Come right around and hook the ball back. Tony Hall's the chance. He's been paid for a push in the face, according to umpire John Hilton. So Tony Hall's got a chance to boot his fourth. And he's no more than about 10 metres out at most. Brilliant player, Tony Hall. He's booted two in the first, one in the second so far. This is his seventh kick. Dead centre. Four goals, Hall. The Bays 12-2. North Adelaide 4-3 on Sevens Big League. Tremendous effort again. Tony Hall almost had this. Stephen Riley was very, very late. And that's what the umpire paid the free kick for. That was Garten's lead, but Marshall went for distance instead because Hall had got loose again. John Riley's his opponent, but he was a long way away from him. Hall is a real danger man. 12-2 to the Bays, North Adelaide are 4-3. Yes, that's a 47-point advantage to the Bays. Parsons got up, couldn't get it out effectively. In goes Cruz, likewise he can't get it out. The ball goes to the half-forward line for the Bays, getting underneath the ball. Another fine mark this time, McDermott. And he's got it 45-50 metres out. Copping is loose. 
Lewis. Not for long. Dilla covers that player. Off goes Kernahan. Let's have a look at the mark. Fine one by McDermott, who's not showing any sign of the injury that's plagued him over recent weeks. Nice looking kick. It's going to be struggling for distance right on the line. A lot of leaping, and the big mark is taken by Arnold in defence. He'll run North Adelaide out. He gets a lead from Robertson. He'll kick wide towards centre wing. Hodgman against Robertson. Robertson in front at the second grab, takes the mark. Elects to play on now. Long one. Bennett getting underneath it. Hughes running against the flight, or at least Cruz running against the flight. Bennett comes out with a footy, looking for Dietrich. He won't lead off. He goes now. It's a beautiful pass, but he can't quite get there. Cut off brilliantly by Donovan, and he's got it in the back pocket. Well, Grenville just can't get into the act. They've got him covered down there, and there's Max Cruz. Maynard's loose again, so is Carey. Take your pick there. Then there's plenty over on the other side to shoot at. It's like a game of soccer at the moment, as David Kernahan's got plenty of time, and away he goes. Runs through half forward now. Whoop, he went a bit far, but they forgot to tackle him. Here's a chance now as Robertson dives on the ball. Jarman and Clusby. What's the, the verdict? It's a free kick, in fact. Umpire Kinnear paid it to him for across the uh, side of the chin. Well, I think it was there, Plenty. Yes, Tony Hall, that right arm, well, in fact, it was Seabone, around the neck. The outer side it goes. Bennett throws himself on top of it. Henwood there. And he's uh, going to give a free kick. No, he's not. He's going to bounce it. Currently 20 degrees in Adelaide. And quite warm for the players out there. Ideal conditions, however, as Simons can't control it, pushes it out of play. Magnificent effort by the Bays, 12-2 to 4-3 at the 14-minute mark. There's a great shot of this magnificent oval, capacity crowd, great conditions. Everything going right, except North Adelaide can't get into the game. Carey dominating, kick number 11. Who is mining Maynard? Maynard goes to half forward, take your pick, see no more copying. And they are just running this defence of North Adelaide Ragged. It's all happening in the middle, however. The Glenelg players are loose, Maynard in particular, and he's causing havoc. Seabone's kick is covered the distance OK, but he's offline. 12-3 the Bays. They lead by eight goals. 15 minutes into the second quarter. Yes, David, no question. Peter Maynard has leprosy the way they're keeping clear of him. I think Robertson's the man who's supposed to be looking after him. But Maynard's having a field day. He's had 12 kicks and already booted, what, three goals. Riley goes off the outer side, looking for Tiller, and he might have kicked out of play, but the ball was uh, just touched in time. In fact, I think he played off off the uh, square in any case. 12-3 to 4-3. 15 minutes plus gone second quarter. The Bays by plenty. Throw in half forward left flank. Clisby against Garton. The bodies go in. Clisby's clever tap. Found Hall, however. Concedes ground back to Hodgman. Half forward line. The Bays into attack again. Up in towards full forward. Big leap there. Not successful. Back in defence will be Ryan. Who ducked into it. And the umpire's going to give him a free kick for a high tackle, and it's going to be Stephen Riley from the, the back pocket. Well, uh, they can still lift, but if they go now, that's going to have to be fairly soon. Andrewis runs the gauntlet. He's going to change tack and come on to Grand's down side of the ground. Maynard's going to mark that. Nick Noonan doesn't really believe in checking players, but uh, perhaps he ought to check Maynard, because he's killing him at the moment. Tony Hall went before he had it. Sanders. He'll get a free kick for a push from Marshall. The umpire says they can't play it on it, so going to go back to David Sanders. Yes, David Robertson is the player actually on Maynard, but uh, that's hiding the ball. Well, they can't do a thing right, North Adelaide. Tony Andrews certainly took the chance then. 15 metres against Tony Antrobus, and... Uh, I think that's uh, an incorrect application of the rules. I don't think he can do that. All Tony Antipas did was get up. He doesn't have to give it back to the player. Still, uh, umpires don't change their minds. The big punch away. It went through John Riley. But still Glenelg players everywhere. John Riley again may have been legged. No umpire can here will come in and bounce it. Bounce about 30 metres away from the bay goal. Passes. Hodgman takes it. He's kicked 
It's to the square, it's very high, Steve Aim against Arnold, bursting through Marshall but lost it. Tiller trying to work it clear. It's a push in the back, says umpire Gunnar, and he'll take the free kick deep in the back pocket. So North Adelaide have been under siege throughout this game. The difference is eight goals again. They trailed by four at quarter time. Carey dominating. Couldn't control that one. Robertson got it back to Andrews, who really hasn't got in the game. Simon's pushed him in the side, and there'll be a throw in. Tony Andrews. Had a che very checkered 1986. Parsons at the back of Carey. Ran into trouble, Carey. Caught one high. Robertson, the offender. And Big Super will take the free at right half forward. But probably uh, too far out to score. Seabone goes off. So does Copping. He's lost Wildy. Carey's going to go for distance. Although Seabone got loose. He's banged it in long. Looking for Garten. At the back, Clisby. Seabone got it over the top. Is loose. So is Maynard yet again. Maynard can bang in towards goal. But he's offline. And another point. 12-4 then the Bays. North Adelaide are 4-3. We've played 18 and a half minutes in the second quarter. Arnold to kick in or no, it's going to be Wildy. Coming out grandstand side. Looking for Robertson. Kept his eyes on the ball. Can't get it out. Hodgman. No, the free kick is going the way of Robertson. Half back line. 12-4 plays 4-3. Robertson pushes out the pass, looking for Klomp. Can't quite get there. Bennett, he loses it too. Donovan did it well. Quickly cruised the handball away. It was a shocker. Stringer, hands and knees. Hodgman puts in long. The lead of Marshall. Over the top comes Riley and foils the ball across the line and out of play. 12-4 to 4-3. Almost 20 minutes gone in the second quarter and the Blaze playing superb football. Carey, Parsons, Tiller, Robertson ducked the head into that one. Marshall too slow, ridden into the ground, holding the ball, six of one, half dozen the other, and the free kick will go the way of North Adelaide if the Ant doesn't do something stupid. Well, they'd need to kick a few before half time, North Adelaide, and uh, they must realise that. They've got to start getting back into the game immediately. Andrew Jarman has been out of the game for a long time, appeared to have been injured in the first quarter. The bad bounce favours the Bays. Through goes Henwood, he has the run of it. it was well done there by Point, and he's going to get a free kick for legging. Oh, Henwood has gone for the big one. I think that was probably a fair bit worse than the one I saw in the first quarter that uh, incurred the report of um, Busby. Poynton's at half forward left. Kicked a great goal about 10 minutes ago. Superb kick normally. Redden, not a chance of marking that ball and all that laid forwards. It'll be held to heart and there'll be a bounce. Certainly umpire Hilton has uh, incurred the wrath of the crowd recently. The 15 metering of uh, Antrobus and that free kick then. Hart, Jarman, a chip away is a point. North Adelaide doing well, getting it up there, but couldn't score a goal. 4-4 to 12-4, the Bays by eight goals. Three goals quickly. Duthie has Hodgman loose. And that's been the story of the game. Just how they've got into the spaces. Again, Wayne Stringer is clear. This is a contest at centre wing. Riley at the back. Punches it clear, but only Stringer snared it, hooks it back. As far as Sanders, he gets it on the heart, a build up here for North Adelaide, although the kick is not a good one. He's put it high, up in front, and out in front was Poynton, and there's a very worried Michael Noonan. Poynton has it, and uh, he can drag them back to within seven goals with a goal here. Oh, but it's a big deficit. Poynton is 40 metres out, 45 degree angle. He kicked that marvellous goal about 10 minutes ago. They need it badly. Drop punt has got the goal umpire moving a long way. One point only, 4-5 North. The Bay's 12-4. North are starting to steady, but they want to do more than steady. They've got to get their brilliance going at the moment. The Bay's doing it so well. Gibbs, a long one to centre wing. Maynard and Robertson. The Ant uses pace, breaks clear. One-on-one, Duthior coming to meet it now. Grenville over the top.
top, didn't really get a start. Pointing on the left leg, this will be a top kick if he gets it. Lose it, gets the kick away, flattened. But the umpire's not interested. He allows the pointers, down goes Pointing. Looks up to see that one point has been registered to North Adelaide. 4-6, whoop, to 12-4. Well, he caught plenty, but uh, no free kick. Now, Ross Gibbs did this last time, and uh, they're going to let him do it again. Which is uh, fairly appropriate if you've been following the game. Andrew Jarman on that time, occasion behind Alan Stringer, gives away the free kick. 4-6 to 12-4, the Bays by plenty. 23 minutes into the second quarter, Alan Stringer thinking about who he's going to kick it to. Garten and Redden, Redden over the top, takes the good mark. The only movement is Peter Bennett, so he's the target. Stringer goes for the thump, there's a free kick. And that will go to who? To the Lord player, in fact, I think it might be Max Cruz. And uh, that may have been an in-the-back in the decision just prior to the ball uh, arriving. 46 points difference then at the 23 and a half minute mark of the second quarter. Cruz has it at half back. He's going to centre it. Red and late on the scene, but Garten had it in front. The Supreme in the air there, Supreme on the ground there. They've just absolutely annihilated North Adelaide. That kick's not a good one. Comp got back and took the mark. Comp, who came onto the ground when Campbell went off, fires in short to Andrew Jarman. See if they can build something up here. Off goes Hart, but it's longer than him. Bennett appeared to get one in the eye. Hart went back to get it. He's gone short now, looking for Poynton. Good punch away, however, by Donovan. Antibus goes tearing after it, close to the line. And Gibbs is content to have it out of bounds. In fact, he's got a bit aggro with Antibus, and he's given away a foolish free kick. The ball is already out of play. And he hurled it back at the end. Here it is again. Oh, I know why now. Antibus' tackle was just a fraction high. And um, Gibbs was a little concerned about it. Andrew has copped it right in the mush. Screw is back, but he hasn't given it enough. One point only. 4-7 north, they're in trouble. The Bays are 12-4. No doubt about the ant, he's always colourful, or is it controversial? Maybe it's both. Duthy kicks long out towards the lead now of Simons. Out there with him was Stringer. Close to the line, the ball is out of play. Obviously, the half-time entertainment is starting to surround the oval as we're approaching the big break. Into time on of the second quarter, 12-4 to 4-7. And I'm sure the crowd would love a closer contest. North Adelaide not out of it yet, but they're going to have to work hard. Hart, Jarman, they go into attack now. Robertson, a brilliant solo goal in the first quarter. Can he do it again? Puts it on the twirling. the 27 minute mark of the quarter it's going to be Garten to jump against Bennett and they got it back to Andrew Jarman he's put a high one towards half forward at the back Darren Jarman well, the umpire's whistle play up he's going to play a push against Darren Jarman and Wayne Stringer will take it at centre half back well look Maynard's on his own again there hasn't been anybody within 50 metres of him all day Hoppy Bolts Kick number 14 coming up in a marvellous performance, remarkable performance. Popping in front, 
Tony Hall takes it, then gets it back to Copping. He's besieged now, loses it. That's got to be holding the ball. And John Riley will take the free. Now John Riley from half back, just to relieve the pressure for a moment as Matthew Campbell prepares to come back on. Just who's coming off? The kick from Riley heads towards centre wing. McDermott had front spot. Andrew Jarman to Klopp. He's run down and lost it to Simons. Although the umpire said the tackle is just a fraction high and he'll get the free kick. On the outer side, North Adelaide are going to attack. The runner's out towards Poynton, but uh, I can't see him being replaced. He's about their only dangerous forward. We'll soon know. The umpire has seen an infringement. The Bay player ran over the mark and a 15-metre penalty will take North Adelaide closer to the half-forward line. Wildy, a kick in towards the pocket, Hart sets himself, can't bring it down, and the ball runs out of play in the right forward pocket. Campbell's still waiting to go on, 12-4 to 5-7, we've played 28 minutes. The umpire is going to put Grendel off, the big fellow's off, but he hasn't been able to get into the game. He had two shots at the woodwork in the first quarter for one point only, and so obviously Mike Noonan's going to add a little bit of pace to that forward division. A bounce down on the right forward pocket, 12-4 to 5-7. The ball comes in now towards Hart. Hooks it high. Really nowhere at all. Players set themselves. Duthie up and the umpire has paid a free kick. North Adelaide. It's going to Peter Bennett. I didn't see what for. Maybe the boys can help me out in a moment. But Peter Bennett has got it 30 metres out in front. A very important kick for North Adelaide. He got under it somewhat. The umpire under the post. But he's paid it. Bennett boots his first. North Adelaide but still trails 6-7 to 12-4 on the 7's big lead. Well, the big surprise was Greenville Dietrich off the ground, Matt Campbell back on. So it's going to be the Ruckman resting at full forward. That's Parsons and Redden. Greenville, he's been uh, under a special deal under the guidance of Mick Noonan in the last three or four weeks, but it doesn't appear to have paid dividends, and uh, Greenville presently in the dugout. Back in the centre with umpire Hilton, it's... Garten on the ball, Carey having a well-deserved rest at the moment. Clock got it to Peter Bennett. No, a throw, says umpire Hilton. They look dangerous there. The players further afield haven't heard the whistle, but the ball will come back. Free to the Bays. There's a bit of a dot yike behind play. There's uh, Matthew Campbell's down. He's up again. Not quite sure what happened, but there's a roar from the crowd. He was in the vicinity. The kick now from guard. It's towards the full forward area. Popping almost at the second attempt. Players finding it difficult to get it clear, and there's going to be a bounce. Very close to siren time in the second quarter. The match that North Adelaide have controlled from start to half time. Carey battling hard. Can't get it out. Riley, it's John Riley in trouble. Tried to get a handball on, but couldn't. And again, there'll be a bounce. Very close to half-time in the 86th grand final. The Bays leading by 33 points. Siren sound, there it is. Half-time in the big one. Glenelg with a commanding lead. Michael Noonan with plenty of problems during the half-time break. Sees the opposition leading 12-4 to his own six goals, seven. On the occasion of the Jubilee grand final, it is fitting that the league celebrates the Jubilee with a spectacular show characterising an enormous state birthday party. Let the celebration begin.
certainly fantastic. Uh, very well done. 150 years. Uh, it's our birthday here in South Australia. We're pretty happy about it. But uh, right at this particular moment, Graham Campbell, Mick Noonan and his boys wouldn't be too happy. A lot of soul searching needed, Pete, in the North Adelaide rooms. They really haven't manned up on their direct opponents. Primarily, Peter Maynard has been a hell of a worry to them. He just seems to be running loose out there. And David Robinson must tighten up. If not Andrew Jarman, who I think's gone into the centre at the moment, so it's not his problem. Is he fit, Andrew Jarman? Well, I think he's carrying a bit of a leg initially, but if you're out there, you're fit. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. You've got to compete. Ross Gibbs coming off. How'd you well, see that? Well, that was the only way to go, Pete. I agree. Uh, I agree implicitly with Graham Corns. Ross Gibbs showed a lack of discipline that can't be allowed by a coach, and uh, any self-respecting coach must do what he did. And mm -hmm. I, I support his. I applaud him for what he did. Uh, Ross just showed a lack of composure completely. Threw the ball at Tony Antipas's head for some unknown reason, and it could have cost Glenelg a goal. Right. Well, Scorers there for Glenelg, Hall with four, Simons, Maynard with three each, Copping Marshall one, and for North Adelaide, Robertson, two fantastic goals, and then Hart, Antrobus, Poynton and Bennett with one goal each. We did mention before that we feel that, and this is unconfirmed, that Clisby has been reported for striking Tony Hall, and that uh, also Chris Duthie may have been reported right on the half-time siren for striking Matt Campbell. Unconfirmed as yet, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that a little bit later. But, uh, Graham, you've said the game's not over, I agree no, with you. What the North need to do in this, uh, oh, kick goals obviously, but regroup first of all, Pete, get a bit of composure in their game, and they started to do that midway through that mm. second quarter. I think when Ross Gibbs got dragged to the ground, it just starts unsettled Glenelg a little. Although as I said, I would have done the same thing myself. Andrew Jarman looks, he's definitely limping, he's definitely got oh. a bad leg, so uh, things are a bit grim there. But th they need desperately put the first two goals in this quarter, otherwise they, they might blow it. And I say might because football is a long, enduring game. It goes for four quarters. Roughly 30 minutes apiece. Nothing is ever impossible if, you, if you're close enough. But they are six goals down, or they need six goals to hit the front. Mm. And there's one of the blokes that I rank as one of their better players so far, Michael Poynton. Two goals. With, with uh, Daryl Hart around the packs, and uh, Arnold, the fullback's been a fair player, but the Bays have got all the good players. Uh, Peter Maynard, he's three goals. His kick gathering's been brilliant. Tony Simons on a wing, superb. Three goals from his wing. Tony Hall, the centre forward, has led the way. Uh, Peter Carey in the ruck has got one some telling knockouts. Chris Duthie, the fullback, has kept Grenville well under lock and key. Mm. And uh, they really have. And, uh, Young Cruz, not Young Cruz, but <laughs> Max Cruz, the centre half back, has That's done more than a good job so far. He certainly has. Well, we're not far off uh, commencement uh, of the sea, second half, and our commentators again, David Darcy and Ian Day. Thank you, Peter. Yes, bad luck for North Adelaide. Andrew Jarman, who appeared to hurt his leg in the first 10 minutes of the game, is sitting in the bunker. With him is Grenville Dietrich. So North Adelaide with injury problems and also a 33-point deficit on the scoreboard. Second half of the 1986 Grand Final, Glenelg 12-4, lead North Adelaide 6-7. Can the Northerners get back into the game? Time will tell during the last 60 minutes of the game. Up goes Redden to get the tap away. Stringer in, can't get it out. Robertson over the top, and the umpire will come in to rebound the football. Glenelg led by 24 points at quarter time and eked out their lead to 33 at half-time with magnificent run-on football. Maynard in brilliant touch, Stringer can't get it out. Cruz to the half-forward line, gives Hall a chase, coming to meet it as well as Copping with him, Riley. Hall beautifully done, kicks a long one in towards goal, but the umpire moves away to his left and indicates that the Bays are offline for their fifth point. 12-5, they lead North Adelaide 6-7. But again, they look dangerous. That was a very positive attacking move. Well, Arnold's gone short. Well, he's got a half volley out. He's in trouble now. Caught almost. Arnold comes to support him now, but they've mucked it again. Really hasn't been a good day for the Roosters. The Bays have totally outplayed them. They've been finding it difficult to get things going, save for a couple of solo efforts. One I can remember was that run of Robertson, and that resulted in a goal. But as far as team play is concerned, they've had very little. Garten hooks around the corner. Seabone comes to meet it. Marshall fists it on. But only as far as John Riley. Oh, he's lost it. Chance now for Seabone. Gets it over in the direction of Tony Hall. He swapped, but he gets out of trouble. Back it comes to Hodgman in the square. The handball is a wide one. A wild one. They've lost it. Tiller. On it goes to Clisby. Oh, caught high, but called to play on. Campbell back on the ground. Running forward. The pass is towards half forward. It's a brilliant one. Poynton's off. Swings on the left foot. Poynton hooks it back in towards goal. Henley's getting back and thwarts yet another North Adelaide attack. Henwood, the edge of the square. Goes to the outer side. Getting a leap away as Bennett has to spoil from behind. Farmed out now to Hart. Hart on the left leg, doubles back inside, then goes back onto the left leg, steadies, 
shoots for goal. The umpire is motionless. Hard second goal. Kick number 12. Did it brilliantly. North Adelaide fight back 7-7 to the Bays 12-5. Well, they certainly have to fight back, and uh, they did it very well then. Although I thought Hart got around McDermott pretty easily. He let him get back onto his right boot, and he put it through for his second goal. As Graham Campbell said, they've got to kick goals early in this third quarter. They're doing just that. Can North get back into this game? 28 points the difference now. Carey against Redden. Parsons started on the ball at the beginning of the game. Redden went to the pocket. It may have been a... Costly move as they dominated the centre square early. Crew's got one high, but he's recovered well. That's a magnificent kick towards half forward. Popping has it fisted clear. Marshall goes to get it close to the line. Stephen Riley in pursuit. Oh, well done. He's got it back to David Kernahan, but his kick is well off stray. He's put it out of bounds in the fall, in fact. So that may have been an unwise decision by North Adelaide to start Parsons on the ball. They're rectifying that with Redden out there at the moment. Tiller takes the free kick, bangs it back towards centre wing. Redden against Carey, couldn't hold it. Donovan strongly, players can't get it clear and there'll be a bounce. So the difference is 28 points on Alg in front. Bounce down at centre wing on the outer side. Redden, but he only got it there as far as Kernahan on the left leg of the half forward line. Hall, fine mark. Could be almost within kicking distance. Tony Hall about 45 to 50 metres out. Off goes Garton, playing in full forward at the moment. Into the pocket goes Seabone, copping there as well. And he takes a fine mark under a lot of pressure. Well, the man that was in traction for two days during the week, that wouldn't have helped his neck at all. As Stephen Riley put him down, but quite legitimately. Copping doesn't all look all that flash. He's looking... In the right forward pocket, out goes the bay runner just to see how badly he is. He looks to be in pain. Pretty acute angle. Copping is going to have the shot for goal. 25 metres, 60 degree, taking his time. Time is on the bay side. The kick is home. Second goal, Copping. The steady of the bay is needed. 13-5, plays 7-7. North Adelaide did not need that. It uh, was well done again by Tony Hall as he outmarked John Riley. Got the ball forward. Copping certainly looked a very sick man when he got to his feet, but that's about as hard an angle as uh, there is to kick a goal. He did it very well. Thirty-four points is the difference. North Adelaide going forward. And Robertson's had a bounce. It came back to him, fortunately. Robertson with a long one. It's gone close, but not close enough. One point only. They badly need goals, North Adelaide. Brilliant run again from Robertson. Really deserved better. Yes, David, they need more than solo performances. I know those sort of things left. Oh, Donovan, the big leap, not successful, but they need more teamwork in their play. Titan back towards Bennett. He's conceding ground. Hart's got problems. Can't get it out. McDermott can. Simons. Off goes Hodgman. Beautifully put Simons. And Hodgman's got it at centre half forward. Off goes Seabone now. Leading into the pocket. Hodgman doesn't want him. He's going to kick in long. The kick is not a good one. Going to float in short. The ball comes down in towards the pocket. Leading in the waist now is Seabone. Try to find Hall. But the forward ball goes out of play in the full forward left pocket. Well, another mistake there by the North Adelaide players. Saw the ball go straight up the other end of the ground. 33 points, the deficit. The Bay still looking pretty good. Still that looseness in the Bay forward line. Garten couldn't get boot to ball. Sanders is now playing in the middle. Oop, that hit Copping. Sanders got it back. Now, that was a good recovery. Over to Hart. Hart will go long to the running Campbell. Campbell's got pace. Probably got a touch more than Kernahan normally. Holding the ball, says umpire Hilton. Well done by David Kernahan. Perhaps Matt Campbell a touch unlucky. So David Kernahan will stem the tide. Put Glenelg back in business. Hart comes in late, goes for the thump. But at the drop of the ball again, it's the Glenelg players. Marshall. The tackle's applied. No free kick given. Away goes Klomp. 
Robertson's being used again. He's the quickest man in the game. Oh, could he have run too far? Deja vu, shades of last year. Bennett tackles Cruz, holds up the tide, and there'll be a bounce. Left half forward flank for North Adelaide. Well, he would have been better served to distribute that ball. Bursting through half forward, go along with it. But he's lost it. Bounce on the outer side. Carey up against Bennett. And went past Hart. Maynard boots it back towards centre wing. Tony Hall comes to meet it in front of Riley. Alan Stringer throws it over the top, gives Marshall the run. Bay's looking good. Marshall will go into the pocket. Sebo, what a lead. He's found him. Oh, he had it and lost it, but he's got it back again. Over it goes to Hodgman. Hodgman could have given it to Hall, but he's going to go all the way himself. What a goal. Brilliantly done, Kimmy Hodgman. Once again, the Bay's using that ball brilliantly. What a fantastic handball there to uh, David Marshall on the outer side. And as David said, Hodgman had a choice when he went into the goal, but he prefers to kick mainly with his left leg in latter days. And Hodgman hooked truly for his second goal. And Glenelg lead 14-5 to North Adelaide's 7-8. Redden and Carey. 39 points the deficit. Redden got very high. Hart tries to ferret the ball out. Can't, and there'll be a repeat bounce. Well, North Adelaide got one early, but uh, Glenelg have got two back as we approach nine minutes in this third quarter. Usually a crucial quarter in uh, any game of football, but this one just hasn't gone well for North Adelaide. After the first five minutes, they weren't in the hunt. Still a chance to get back, though, if they're good enough. McDermott, tackled, good tackle by Campbell. Stephen Riley, short to Andrebus. Gibbs is right with him. Andrebus plays it over the top of that player. Robertson just missed, unfortunately for Gibbs, and there'll be a throw in in front of the scoreboard. 39 points. The Bays won last year by 57. Peter Carey and Bennett. Carey takes it out of the air. Gibbs will get a free kick for a push. In fact, it's Max Cruz. Yes, Cruz has it deep in defence. Carey's provided the run for him. He comes across ground, tacking towards the grandstand side. Well, that's good football from Duthie. Penwood's off. Can go a long way, but he's decided to go short, looking for Hodgman. Tiller beats him to it. Now the ball is loose. Henwood gets an awful bounce. Parsons gives it to Tiller. North can go forward. The kick looking for Point and he's in front. Duthie caught. Gibbs has got three to beat now. Close to the line. Hart appeared to push him in the back. In comes Wayne Stringer to lend a hand. An umpire can hear wants to bounce it. Half forward right. Daryl Hart having a few words to umpire Kinnear. They've done a pretty good job, these two, Kinnear and Hilton. Bennett against Carey. McDermott takes it. They've won everything on the ground. Well, it's well smothered, however, by Bennett. Darren Jarman unloaded. He goes after it again, close to the line. Was it in play? Well, it was out when he kicked it, and the umpire will throw it in. The Bay's tackling has been superb. North Adelaide simply can't get clear. McDermott looks a little weary or a little uh, hurt, whatever. He's worked hard. A throw in half forward right flank. Bennett against Carey. Bennett behind. Have to try to farm it away. He can't get it out clear and the umpire will bounce. 14, 5 to 7, 8, 11 minutes plus gone of the second half. And the Bay's still doing it well. Over. Or well, almost seven goal lead. And that's a mammoth lead in any game, let alone a grand final. Carey again, hooks it out wide beautifully to Maynard off the half-back line. Got shoved as he got the kick away. The umpire didn't see, take umbrage on it. Riley, nice one. Swift it over now quickly to Carlaw. That's not a good kick to the half-forward line. Sanders under pressure. Likewise, Campbell. The Bays are making them butterfingered. Hall in there, try to get it out to Donovan. But umpire Hilton will call for a bounce between wing and centre, grandstand side. The Roosters can't take a trick. 7-8 to the Bays, 14-5. It's just in their attacking zone. Carey, Redden, well done by Mick Redden. Klopp couldn't pick it up. He had a touch of the fumbles as well. And umpire John Hilton will bounce again. Robin Kidney is going to come on. 
pick the player up for you in a minute that's in doubt. A free kick there to Mick Redden, who's uh, had a couple of good touches in recent times. McDermott may be the player to come off. The runner just ran past him. I think he's been given the word. Probably doesn't want to come off, though. He wants to uh, enjoy the spoils. Parsons, very well put. And Big Parsons marked that one very easily. McDermott coming off now to be replaced by Robin Kidney. Parsons lines it up. That's a good shot at goal. North 8-8, good old 14-5. Oh, they needed that one badly. It was a beautiful pass from Daryl Harden from the very few, one of the few times this afternoon the North Adelaide attacking players got clear. Parsons was well out in front of Henwood. Took the easy mark and then has converted. He's booted one. He's tried hard, Michael Parsons. I had to take Dietrich off the ground because they had too many big men in that forward line. 8-8 then plays 14-5. Kidney's replaced McDermott, gone straight onto the ball. Riley can't. The ball comes to Campbell, a high one to the half forward line. Searching for it there was Darren Jarman, thumped away Stringer. Bennett first to the line. Can't quite get clear of Stringer. That was a tackle, maybe a little high. The umpire's going to give it to him the second time for a high tackle. Well, it could have been two free kicks then. The umpire just indicating everybody just to keep clear while Bennett will take his free kick. Bennett well out from goal, almost at centre wing in actual fact. Parsons is his target up full forward. Off goes the big fellow, gives him a chance now. He'll get a leap away with it in the middle of the pack, but he can't bring it down. Kidney over the top, Doothy. He can't get a kick away in towards Robertson. Well played now to Simons. In, out, lost the footy. Hard work in there, and the umpire will call for a bounce on the half-forward line of North Adelaide. Well, Simons went in and uh, then out very quickly. He's uh, slightly hurt, but uh, I think he'll be OK. Bennett and Carey. Bennett up far too early. Carey smashes. Simons is on the end of that. Three Glenelg players against one North player then. Riley in front. Put a hand to the ball. Back goes Wildy. He concedes ground. Oh, Hall was on Riley very quickly. Plomp. Wildy, North Adelaide into attack again. Carey's the tallest man there, and he'll mark it. Well, Parsons just didn't bother about that one. Big Super did it so easily, and he did that pretty easily as well. Henwood, Kernahan, we've got runners everywhere, the base. Wayne Stringer, oh. downfield. Klopp has incurred the wrath, and Tony Hall's got it. 30 metres from goal, and uh, really did not need that. Too late, she cried, that one. Tony Hall. He's booted four. That's his tenth kick. He won't miss that. Five goals, Hall. North Adelaide, 8-8. Eight, eight. The Bays, 15-5. Yes, this is bad football by Kim Klomp. Stringer had had the kick for some time. The handball from Kernaham is good. Now watch the disposal is there. And there goes Klomp. Some, well, a long time after he'd got rid of it. The result was a goal, and they can ill afford that. The Bays by 39 points. Ball out towards Carl Orr, tries to ride the bump. Can't get away Stringer, kidney. But Stringer's won the free kick for holding the ball. Alan Stringer certainly never turns corners, goes in a straight line. Stringer from centre field to put the Bays into attack. Screws the ball long. Up to the lead of Seaboam. Arnold couldn't. Coming away, Clisby. On the left leg, goes out wide. Matthew Campbell's out there and takes the ball well on the half-back line. Tries to beat Kernahan for pace. He tried that before. Got pinged for holding the ball, but the ball is a bad one. In goes Campbell again. A chance to pick it up now, Antrobus. He's on the half-forward line. A great tackle put on him. Buttering up again now. Oop. Free kick to Antrobus. He didn't have the footy. The umpire said he could play on. Play on he did to the lead now of Parsons. Carey can't quite get there. Wayne Stringer, the Bay's in there in plenty. Gibbs gets it out. Gives Doothy the chase. He's going to be cut off by Carlor. He'll have to get a good sit. In goes Carlor. Out goes Doothy. Now pointing. Forward right pocket. Darren Jarman. He's allowed to play on. 40 metres out. Puts it on its way. But it's going to be offline. And the ball will just register a point. Big Parsons is annoyed in the square. Thought he should have passed. 
Poynton is down, and North Adelaide register a point. Well, Poynton got put down by a, a bad one, and that was uh, Wayne Stringer perhaps getting one back for the previous one. Alan Stringer now. Maynard's on a lead, and he wants it. I think the point of this exercise is, is that the umpires see one on one side, they perhaps should see the other on the other side. Hodgman goes out towards centre wing. Stephen Riley a fraction late. Matt Campbell with pace. Playing a little bit better now, but uh, maybe a touch late. Robertson. Pacey man, we all know that. He went through there without the ball. Tries to pick it up. And it's taken over the line, I fear, and uh, there'll be a throw in. Left half forward flank for North Adelaide. 18 minutes into the quarter. The difference is 38 points. Glenelg 15-5, North are 8-9. Thrown on the outer side, it's Carey against Bennett. Taken by David Kernahan, well caught by Bennett. Getting clear, Donovan. Hooks it back towards centre wing. Marshall, well in front of Stephen Riley. Takes the mark and there'll be a 15 metre penalty. No, there won't. Stephen Riley. A chat to umpire Hilton. Marshall has it though. Directs it along that outer wing. Copping in front, Wildey pushes it out of play. North trail by 33 points at half time, so the Bays have increased the lead by five points. North can do no right in attack. Clomp. Tiller runs it out of play, and again there'll be a throw in. 15 5 to 8 9. North looks slow by comparison. Redden gets a tap away to Hart. He needs support. Quickly back there is Wildy to John Riley. Centre wing, the ball goes. Out there, Bennett. With him is Cruz. Can't get to the footy. Down goes. Three on one, and that's about how it's been all afternoon. The Bays go into attack through Kernahan. Up towards the half-forward flank. Marshall's there. With him is Tiller over the top. Riley and Hart, and the umpire will come in and bounce. 38 points. The Bays leading. Big Grenville. As we mentioned, under special arrangements in the last several weeks, under the guidance of McNoonan, but doesn't seem to have worked for the big fella because he just hasn't been able to find the ball. And um, he has been a great goal kicker in the past, but today he just hasn't been one for him. Carey, up high, but couldn't mark the ball. It comes out the back door now, though, the big fella. Puts it around the corner. Stephen Riley thumps away towards the line. Maynard's out there, but. Uh, the ball will beat him. Had a sensational first half, Peter Maynard. Really set the Bays alight early in the game. 17 kicks, in fact, Maynard. Now Kidney. Got out of that pretty well. Kick forward. Over the top it went. Maynard's there again. Players everywhere. And umpire Kinnear, in fact, will bounce it. Right half forward flank for the Bays. Play a little untidy just for the moment. Kinnear puts it down and Carey has a swipe at it. It was Garten, in fact, but he's got an arm around the neck of Redden and he'll take the three. Let's see if they can do something with it now. Bennett's off on a lead. With him is Cruz. It went through the hands of Bennett. David Kernahan will met solidly by Kim Klomp. He's played a free kick. And uh, David Kernahan, of course, had that severe concussion a couple of weeks ago. And they're getting yet another heavy knock. But he's OK, he's up. Hodgman takes the kick. Puts it in towards Tony Hall at centre half forward. Wildey at the back clears. The kick is a high one. Darren Jarman's got front spots. Wayne Stringer at the back. Line ball decision. Now a free kick. It's going the way up with Elf and Wayne Stringer will take it. Or boot, boot them into attack. Popping wanted it short, but he hesitated. Off went Garten. Seaboam calling for it longer. I think that's where he's heading. Arnold's a long way behind Seaboam, but he got there late. Sanders. Brushed aside by Hall, back to Simons, twists, turns, and finally lost it. Carlaw came out with it. Now saw, uh, Sanders got it onto Arnold. Hall's in trouble behind play. Darren Jarman's caught. He's had a pretty poor game today, Darren Jarman. Bennett comes clear, slips it across to Sanders. 40 metres out, they need goals. Sanders kick is offline, one point only. Hall's on his feet. That's good news for the Bay supporters. And it's also good news that they lead 15-5 to North 8-10. He's played a marvellous game, booted five. 
But North Adelaide not getting that normal run off their half-back line. The Bay's just simply putting too much pressure on them. The kick-in is good, finds Donovan. Half-back line. Stringer wants it at centre wing. That's the way the ball will go, but he's covered now. Arnold is there. He's worked for a free kick and won it. Arnold a little disappointed. Oop. I don't think he's the most popular man in the, uh, the stadium at the moment. He had to duck from uh, several flying objects then as Stringer from centre wing. Puts the Bays into attack up towards the half-forward line. All can't get started. The ball comes down there towards Stephen Riley. He lost it, comping likewise. John Riley in the action. Gets it back now. Off goes Wildy. Oh, that's not a good kick. It finds the Bays. Kernahan on the half-forward line. If he can get it out, here's a chance now. Donovan puts out the pass into the forward pocket. Goes Marshall. And that's where it all ends. The Bays doing it oh so easily. And players seemingly just getting a little tired now, and that seven-goal-plus advantage if uh, Marshall kicks this is going to be all the bigger for that. Marshall is only 30 metres out. A magnificent kick on the run. Peter Marker tells us none better in South Australia. I'm inclined to agree. See what he's like on a set shot. And he has popped it through. Not bad from set shot either. Second goal, 16-5. The Bay's running away. With this 86 grand final, North Adelaide 8 10. Well, Stringer got the uh, free kick and uh, he went straight up for another goal. Marshall on the end of it. 16 5, the Bays, North Adelaide 8 10. Back at the centre, Bays in control of the 1986 grand final. Angelus trying to work it clear. Gets it over the top to Robertson. Parsons wants it in the pocket, but the handball was good to Sanders. Now Parsons will get it. He's clear. Time to steady from 35 metres. Chips it in towards the square in front, Bennett. Good work at the back by Henwood. Well, Wayne Stringer left it behind. Darren Jarman twists out of trouble. Fires in towards goal. It's gone offline. A point. 8-11 North, the Bay 16-5. Well, the man who pulverised Woodville last week can't do it again today. He just can't take a trick. A couple of shots he's had of goal this quarter have only just boost merely, but that's all I've got to do. 16-5 to 8-11. Doothy goes to the outer side. Carey. Oh, Plomp in front takes the mark. Never in position, or so it would seem. Off goes Poynton. Beautifully put Plomp. But Poynton is led into the pocket and he's got a pretty acute angle. Into time on of the third quarter. A kick of about 30 metres. Poynton has already kicked one. North Badley did another right now. The left foot kick is against the side he's on and that is not a good kick. It's out on the foot. Well, the pitcher tells a story there with Michael Poynton. So does that. He uh, wouldn't be happy with what's going on out there. 8-11 north, Glenelg 16-5. Max Cruz delivers the ball to the outer side. Yes, well, Simon's the only, only player that went for it. Left boot, he wants Donovan. Comes off hands, though. Carlaw, Klopp, Duthie. Klopp will get a free kick for a high one. So uh, Stringer gives it back to him. Robertson yelling for the ball in the pocket, so is Parsons, and he'll get it. Simon's just a fraction late, but Big Parsons has got it at centre-half forward. There's the replay, which shows the, uh, the, the late action there of Tony Simons. Parsons needs to kick one. He's put the ball up very high. It'll float through. The umpire's given the all-clear. Parsons has got his second. North... 9-11, the Bays 16-5 on Seven's big lead. It's taken mammoth effort for North Adelaide to get back into this game. Parsons had got clear on that occasion. Duthie was a bit late. He did it earlier, too. Parsons got away from Henwood. It was a good shot for goal. He's booted two. North had got 9-11. The Bays are 16-5, as I said. It's going to be a big effort for him to get back into this. Sure is, David, but you're never dead until you lie down. At the centre bounce, the bounce favours Red and thumps the ball away. Carlaw can't find it. Or is it Sanders in there? Sanders it was, and the umpire will come in and repeat the bounce. The Bays by 36 points. 
Packed house of about 50,000. Beautiful day. Oh, Henwood came over the top. Gave Hall the run. Put in a long one. It's a magnificent kick. It's a goal. Goal number six. Oh, Tony Hall, you are a star. Brilliantly done. 17-5 the Bays. 9 North Adelaide. Great action on Sevens Big League. Well, it was Henwood who provided the, uh, the thrust and the momentum then. Tony Hall simply picked it up and booted the goal. at six for him. And he's played an outstanding game there at centre-half forward. The Bays are 17-5, North Adelaide at 9-11 on sevens, big lead. Far Hilton to get proceedings underway again. Carey, who's done such a remarkable job in the middle all day. Beaten by Redden on that occasion, but Maynard does the supporting work. Boots it back towards half-forward. It's a loose ball. Stephen Riley will get there first. Campbell wants it long. David Kernahan cuts across in front of him, and Campbell has jumped straight into his back and given away the free kick. And they can do no right, and everything that the Bays have touched really has turned to gold. Kernahan searches for Tony Hall again. He's been very hurtful, Tony Hall. Marshall can't control it, but he's played a very fine game as well, Marshall. Throw in on that outer side. The difference is 42 points. Garten. Sanders is lifted since going to the centre. Opportunity for Campbell. He was taken from the ground in the second quarter, Matt Campbell. Whether it was from injury or poor form, we're not sure. Robertson bursts through. He's got no one to give it to. Gets a handball out in front of himself. Trying to get it back. But Donovan did well to push it out of play. 17-5 to 9-11, close to three-quarter time. Parsons against Carey at the throw-in. Carey tried to tap it to Henwood, who can't find it. He's back in play now. Carey cleverly back towards Antrobus. With him there is Kidney. The Ant has to get rid of that in a hurry. He's pulled off the footy, and the umpire's going to give him a free kick. Just the attack side of centre wing to put North Adelaide into attack. Siren sounds. Three-quarter time, and the big one... The Bays with a commanding lead. In the 1986 Grand Final, they lead 17-5 to North Adelaide, 9-11. It's three-quarter time at Football Park. North Adelaide, 9-11, trailing the Bays, 17-5. Paul has been a star with six. Simons and Maynard, three each. Copping and Marshall, two each. Hodgman, one. Robertson, Hart, Parsons, two each for the Roosters. Poynton, Bennett and Antipas, one each. Graham, it's three-quarter time. It's not all over. It never is in football, Pete, no. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the scoreline, 22 mm -hmm. shots to 20. Right. But that's not the story of the game. The Nuggle got goals in an easy fashion. A free kick down the field against Kim Clonk really hurt them. That and I was good. disappointed in John Riley. Uh, I don't mean for the fact that Tony Hall has kicked six goals for the game and probably four on Riley. Uh, when that free kick was paid down field, John Riley refused to work on the mark, gave Tony Hall an easy passage for goal, when the player kicking the goal doesn't really feel that mm. confident. And he just was given an easy passage, as I said, and made, made a simple matter of it. And, gee, he's a good player, Tony Hall. Well, he is. He's a fantastic player. Things look reasonably good for North Adelaide early in the, first, in the, uh, early in the third quarter. Darrell Hart got free and kicked a fine goal. I, he, uh, I thought they gave him a bit of latitude, let him get back onto that right boot. Yes, actually, he worked hard to get that right foot, and he wasn't allowed to. He came back on his left, then straightened up, which was remarkable, really, Peter. Players mm. don't normally have the uh, presence of mind to do that. He kicked a good goal, they put him back in the game by about, I needed five goals to get back in front. But then, you know, Hodgman, I think you'll find, well, he did. He jumped came out back of the ground. And uh, they, they ran it through half forward brilliantly, and uh, of course, Hodgie on that left boot, which he loved. Well, he wants to go on the left foot, Pete. He, he, you're doing him a favour if you force him on his left hand. There's a rather ambitious hand pass from Alan Stringer, but I found the mark in uh, David Marshall, who popped it over. Uh, John Seabone dropped what he should have held and fed it over. Hodgie on the left foot, loves it, has a look at it, and he goes berserk after this goal. Fair enough, the, band, the band's had a tight game. You know, not by that I mean mm. kicks have been tight for him, and that's a good left foot goal. He put his hands up in the air to the heavens. It's hard to see North winning it, but in football, it's still on till the final bell goes, Peter. So uh, North are in a despairing position, but it isn't over, as I say. Well, that's right, another 30 minutes, but a man that's uh, 
Going to make it hard for them is Tony Hall. He's booted six already, and boy, what a game he's had. Uh, superb performance. It's been a stroke of luck for Glenog, I guess, to be forced to play him at centre-half four, but that is a magnificent goal. I mean, no one can blame John Riley for that. And, you know, that was just the way the ball fell. And uh, But, as I said before, John has a habit of not working hard on the mark when he should. Mm. Every player is duty-bound to work on the mark and make the player having a shot for goal kick over him. You're allowed to. The, the game is set up that way. And yet he, he has refused to do it on a couple of occasions today. And I just feel that the North spirit drops away when that happens. Well, Graham, you mentioned before the game that a couple of players that, uh, and there's McNernan in screen, a couple of players that haven't had much play in the last month or so, Robertson and Andrews, perhaps they're showing signs of that. Yes, and I just think that, uh, you know, that lack of, I suppose, hard football does tend to tell when you're seven goals down. Mm. It's a bit harder to, to, to pump yourself up and keep going. Now, if there are a couple of points in front, different story, Pete. You, you probably play on your heart the last quarters, and I was saying of mine, when everything else is gone, you play on your heart. Mm. Well, you know, you can't have much heart if you're seven down. But as I say, they've got the scoring in more than likely this quarter. It is hard to differentiate between either end. But they've probably got the scoring in. They need the first couple badly. If they get them, the game's on again. But they've got no alternatives. Andrew Jarman can't come back on the ground. He's gone. And, and Grenville Deep as well. They're going to play one spot. So really, the way they're going is the way they've got to stay now. Big Michael Parsons a full forward. Change with Michael Redden. Uh, they've got Ruck Roving. Uh, they've got Kim Pont Ruck Roving now of Darren Jarman. They've got uh, David Sanders in the centre. Your man right. in the centre. Yes. I know you like him there. And he's had a, had, had a couple of good movements that oh. quarter, Peter. Yeah, no, he just didn't kick goals he should have kicked. Well, we've seen some great comebacks in grand finals. Let's see if we can see one today. Let's see if North Adelaide can get back into this game and make a real game of it. The grand final for 1986, last quarter coming up. Your callers, David Darcy and Ian Day. 17-5 plays 9-11 in the 86 grand final. The Bay's off to a great start from the first quarter, led by 24 points at that stage, 33 at halftime, and now they've got a massive 42-point lead. Umpire Kinnear holds the ball aloft for the final quarter of 1986, where the Bay's looking like they're going to get back-to-back -back premierships. At the centre bounce, it's going to be Carey against Redden. Carey gets the tap away in towards McDermott, who's back on the ground, whips out a handball. Simons does it beautifully. Maynard puts it up now high for Garten. Over the top comes Arnold. Can't get it down. Here's a chance. See Bohm if he can get the city card. Working hard for it is Garten. He can't get the ball clear. And the umpire will come and ball it up in the right forward pocket. The Bays have had too much run all afternoon. They've done it brilliantly. A bounce down on the edge of the square. Guard on. In there is Stephen Riley. Can't get the ball clear. Players search for it in the pack. Stephen Riley at the bottom of the pack. Trying to find out who it is, but... Uh, it's uh, Alan Stringer who's going to come up for air as Kinnear bounces once more. Yes, it's about 30 metres away from their goal. North would have to get two or three pretty quickly to be in it. Appeared to be a high tackle, but umpire Kinnear wants to bounce it again. Almost in the identical spot. North Adelaide need it up at the other end of the ground. See if they can run it out of the fence here. Bennett does the bullocking work. John Riley backs himself into trouble. Copping had it and lost it. And again, they can't get it clear, and again, there's going to be a bounce. Right on the edge of the square. North need goals, and they need it quickly. The base, the underdogs, but, gee, they're doing it well. Tony Hall, almost a brilliant take over the top in Burroughs' kidney, but the umpire's going to bounce once more. 25 metres out, and uh, this is almost an action replay, David. This is the fifth bounce in about a minute. Copping... Got it clear. John Riley can't. Oh, now he's sorted out of free. That's probably the best way to get things going. John Riley's got it. Speaking of John Riley, David, I have the impression he's not fully fit. I don't reckon he's moving as freely as he ought. Sanders boots along the wards half forward. Arnold's down there. Well, he's made a few changes. Michael Noonan. Arnold's come away from full back. He's gone to centre half forward. But it's a sterling performance by Carey. Kick number. 16 it is towards centre wing. Hall went high. Chance for Robertson on the ground. Chips in short. Tiller. Now he's he been moved also. He started in the back pocket. Robertson wants it short, but he's gone longer. Arnold up high. Oh, he's got the mark. Well, he went up early, got into the back of Carey, lobbed on his feet and then took the mark. There's the leap first. Now he's taken it on the way down. And Paul Arnold, who started at full back, Chance to boot his first, surely. North 10th. They need it badly. They trial by 42 points. A goal would bring them back to 35, but he's offline. It went off the side of his boot. 
a point only. They can ill afford that. They're 9-12. The Bays are 17-5. Well, North had to make changes. They certainly going, weren't going to win with the combination as they had it. Simons to the lead of Maynard. What a fine game. Kick number 20 coming up. Brilliant first half. He's a little quieter in that third quarter, but still has played a champion game. Half forward line. Scotty Salisbury's in the action. Hart. No help. He's got to go towards the line with Stringer in pursuit. But the ball is out of play at centre week. 17-5 to 9-12. Carey, what a superb game. Had a bit of a spell from Garten, but in the main, he's done it on his lonesome. Fights for Redden with the footy. Hart gets it out. A high kick to the half-forward line. Donovan did it well, but not well enough. Arnold looking for running sport, support. Gives a chance now to Robertson. Gets it to the end. who got a bad one. Out goes Gibbs. Simon's well done. Cruz, centre wing. McDermott's got to raise a metre to get there. One to beat Riley. He does it well. Puts out the pass half-forward line. chosen and he's got the ball 35 metres out. The Bay's doing it on the bit. Seabone from 35 metres out, almost head on to goal. A casual looking kick which is normal. His first goal, 18-5 plays 9-12. Well the Bay's got the first one in this last quarter. And obviously North Adelaide would have wanted it, but that wasn't to be. McDermott played well to get the ball forward. And Seabone, who hasn't had a big one, got into the act and kicked a fine goal. Well, it seems certain now the Null will win back-to-back -back premierships. 1985 and 1986, they've got the first goal in the last quarter. First time ever for the Bays. What a coaching performance from Graham Corns. And that man there, he owes so much to him. Number five, playing 406th game today. Peter Carey, and what a magnificent effort he's put in. Simons has caught and lost it. Darren Jarman will get clear. Goes in short. Arnold on a lead, takes it. Had nobody going for him, so he's gone back. Steady it down, not a good pass. Poynton went off into the pocket, but it was wide of him. And they were a little fortunate in the finish that it didn't go out of bounds on the full. They're trailing lamentably. The difference is 47 points. It was 24 at quarter time, 33 at half time, and 42 points at three quarter time. It's been somewhat of a disappointing effort. In fact, a very disappointing effort. Parsons has caught, he's lost it to Salisbury. Gibbs comes clear. Bay supporters on their toes as Gibbs bounces out of defence. He can go a long way. Henman flex him. Bangs it up towards centre wing. Copping was out in front. Wildey, who's done a pretty good job on Copping today, puts it out of play. 9-12 north, the Nolga 18-5. The Bay's playing with supreme confidence, almost arrogance at the moment, such as their superiority. Throw in. Hall, can't find it, Stringer against Redden, Hall gets it out, but as far as Matthew Campbell, Riley and Clump on top of the ball, and umpire Hilton will come in for the bounce. Campbell on the turf. The Bays really never gave North Adelaide a chance from the start. They're out of the blocks in a flash with brilliant running football, and there's a yike on behind play, and she's a ripper. The ball goes that way, they don't even know it's coming. They <laughs> Suddenly they've got to change tack. incredibly in uh, no North Adelaide player got excited about it Wildy is going up with a goal umpire and saying you report him the goal umpire I wouldn't think he'd be too interested away go North Adelaide anyway Boosby it was who got the ball forward Clock ran through did it well a lot of courage there when he gave it over to Darren Jarman he's had a poor one can he kick a goal no he can't so they can't take a trip, North Adelaide. 9.13 now to the Bay's 18.5. Carlo after the 
that incident is being carried off by the trainers. North can do no right. The kick in. Kerry got a hand on it. Redden battles hard, but they're clear again the Bays. Maynard to Simons. Back to Maynard. And centre wing that boots them towards half forward. Tony Hall's got the front spot. Riley did well. That's John Riley, but it ricochets back to Hall. On the Alan Stringer. Stringer 30 metres out. Hands it off to Seabane. Oh, he's gone back to Stringer. Shouldn't have. Should have turned around and kicked the goal. And there's Carlo going down into the rooms. Obviously under a great deal of strain, but a wry smile on the face of Alan Stringer. Seabone could have gone onto the left foot and booted a goal. Copping. Swings onto the left boot, hooks it back. Not enough. One point only. 18-6 the base, 9-13 north, we've gone to the nine-minute mark of the last quarter. Yes, David, I think Alan Stringer thought he'd get it back in the one-two, but uh, Frisbee cut him off at the pass and uh, forced the error. Hart should get a free kick, does. North need all they hope they can get at the moment. Players getting very tired indeed, and there's scuffles, quite a few of them at the moment. North Adelaide probably through sheer frustration. Started as the, uh, the favourite, and they certainly haven't played like that. But he hasn't had a big day. What a nickname. Jarman is a high kick towards centre wing. Oh, up goes Arnold. In front is Cruz. The umpire said play on. Cruz has got to get a free kick out of this one. And he's at centre field to put the Bays into attack. On the outer side. Oh, set copping up somewhat. Not copping. It was Maynard. Now Kernahan. Kerry's waiting for the backup. Back to Kernahan in the 1-2. On the half forward line. He's out there alone. Again, Maynard, all this time he's tackled beautifully. Play on. North Adelaide out of defence. A high kick up towards the half forward line. Up goes Doofy. Fine mark. And he's got it at centre half back, almost at centre wing. Well, they're doing pretty well, the Bays. They're 18 6, Northern 9 13. Good mark by Doofy. Comes into the towards the centre of the ground for Simons. Up goes Robertson. That was a good effort. And he's been a pretty good player for North Adelaide, although. He was actually standing Maynard in the first half. So I suppose that when you analyse his game, you've got to put that little stat into it. Ross Gibbs. Will he kick a drop kick in this last quarter? There are plenty of loose players over there. Kernahan to Wayne Stringer. Sanders comes across from the centre of the ground. Tries to find Klomp. Wayne Stringer kicks into the crowd. It's 18-6 the Bays, north of 9-13. And it would appear that unless North Adelaide can perform a miracle out there that uh, they're not even going to make it respectable. Carey cut one in the face there. Now, the play stopped momentarily. But umpire Kinnear, I think, wasn't going to give a free kick. Carey couldn't have been hurt because he got up like a startled gazelle. <laughs> Salisbury, Carey, kicks to the line. Maynard's handball is a good one. McDermott, off he goes. Aim for Gart on. Riley comes across, didn't mark the ball. Hall went in very hard. Riley out. Bennett, thought he might have used Klomp, but he's going to go longer to Tiller. Well, that late captain would be a very disappointed man presently. Oh, good mark, do think. Fine mark in defence again. Gibbs is loose. Simon should get it next. Well, they're running rings around North Adelaide now. Simon's just steadying it down now, quite arrogantly. Hooks one around the corner. Hella Stringer out in front. Couldn't control it. Andrewis will get it. Kick is towards half forward, but there's two against one there. Big passes, puts the arms up. Takes a big good mark. Henwood standing the mark. Parsons wants to go on, but he'll have to come back. Henwood knew. He still hasn't gone behind the mark, and he should know better than that. So he's forced to come back. In the meantime, all the forwards have been covered. Parsons puts it into the pocket. Arnold on a long lead. That's a good mark. Well, he's put a little bit of a spark into their forward line, something that wasn't there before. Big Grenville couldn't get into the game. Peter Bennett has had his moments, but there have only been a few. Arnold fires towards goal, but again he's offline. I'm not sure whether he's going to make the distance or no, he hasn't. That's a fine mark in defence again by Duthie. 
when you have a look at it. 22 scoring shots to 24, but the Bays lead by plenty. Wayne Stringer inside the half-back line. Maynard is still alone and short, but Wayne Stringer letting the seconds tick out in 86. Kicks long. Experience plays a big part in finals, as we all know. And yet another mark to Tony Hall now. Riley Nettle got off the ground. And I just believe that his back might be playing up with him because he's certainly not moving like the John Riley we know. The ball is out of bounds at uh, centre wing. In fact, it's, it's on the full. So the penalty free kick will go the way of North Adelaide. Jarman's kick is going towards the half forward line. Simon's missed it. John Riley chips out a pass into the pocket. Pointing the leaper with him there is Duthie. They go in hard for the ball, over the top. Boy, here's a chance, Hart. Hart heads the goal, sets it up now, check sides it from about 10 metres, and it's the woodwork. Well, when it is not your day, it simply is not your day. Edwards the fullback, and it is certainly not working for North Adelaide. Peter Carey, he's running faster than most North Adelaide players. Ross Gibbs, will this be his last game for the Bays? Salisbury. Just defence side of centre wing. Kicks long to half forward. Up goes Robertson. Couldn't mark the ball. Pushes it out towards Antropus. He crawls after the ball and uh, the umpire's going to give him a free kick. 9-14 to 18-6. The Bay's leading by 20. Arnold's at centre half forward. Couldn't mark the ball. Donovan, he's played pretty well. Kernahan goes for the line and finds it. Bennett couldn't quite hold it in. There'll be a throw in centre wing with the, the Bays leading now by 46 points. Approaching the 15 minute mark. The lawn hope now for North Adelaide. Kernahan's smother is brilliant. That's typical of the play today. They've just had players at the fall of the ball. They've been more determined, more purposeful. As a result, scorers on the board. Maynard kicks it high. It's going to stay in play. Alan Stringer went high above Stephen Riley. Throw in centre wing grandstand side. The difference is 46 points and North Adelaide. To sure a beaten side. Garten's handball. Stephen Riley had it. Redden in what may be his last game for North Adelaide. Bennett's clear. Wanted to give it off to Darren Jarman. Got around Kernahan. Now he's going for distance. He's gone long into the square. Almost to mark the Parsons. On the ground, Poynton. Snaps in. I think he may have got it. Yes. A belated goal. Two to Poynton. Yes, well done, Michael Poynton. But North Adelaide's attacks have been disjointed. I agree with the fact that... Uh, Peter Bennett's probably been as good as any of their forwards. He had a fine dash through the half-forward line. The ball came to ground, and Poynton got himself in all sorts of trouble, but managed to get his left leg to the ball and boot a good goal. Marshall back into the action, and off goes Wayne Stringer after a fine game. 18-6 plays, 10-14. Twenty-four scoring shots each, and uh, the Bays by plenty. Attendance, 50,538 people have uh, turned up to watch the 1986 Grand Final, which saw Glenelg get away to a tremendous start to boot 7-2 to 3-2 in that first quarter. Of course, the second quarter was quite incredible. Glenelg just went from strength to strength, and they're still going from strength to strength without holding the ball decision. McDermott's got the free kick. The handball is to Marshall. He's, in fact, at half-back. Tony Hall's at half-forward. He's booted six. Pretty close to best man on the ground. To make John Riley look slow and lethargic as he just did then is an indication of the man's class. Seabone's got the ball now. He's had a big day, Seabone. Kicked the goal earlier in this quarter. And he's just kicked another one. Two goals, John Seabone. The Bays 19-6, North Adelaide 10-14. Well, it hasn't been a big day for John Seaburn. It certainly has for Tony Hall. Look at the arrogance here. So easily around a man who some say is the best half-back flanker in the state, if not in the land, John Riley. And the 
way he got around him is a true indication of a top performance by Tony Hall. At the centre bounce, it's Redden against Carey. 18 minutes gone of the final quarter of 86. Cruz goes for the soccer off the ground. It's a loose ball. Coming to meet it is Riley. Stephen type. Through the half-back line, he's got time to have a bounce. McDermott can't catch him. Puts out the pass. Arnold's on the lead, and that's a good one. Arnold at centre-half forward. Might be just beyond his distance. Wasn't successful last time. Hart gives him a lead short. Gets him underneath the ball just fractionally, but he takes a solid mark 30 metres out in front. North still fighting on, but you wouldn't expect them to give it away. But the Bays on the day have simply been just far too good. Superb running performance. Use of the ball has been absolutely brilliant. Hart's kick is online. Goal number three. North Adelaide keep fighting in 11-14 to 19-6. Same number of scoring shots. In fact, 25. Daryl Hart's booted three. A good effort for North Adelaide. He certainly tried hard all day. They made a lot of positional changes, the most notable being Arnold to centre-half forward in this last quarter. We're 19 minutes into the last quarter, the difference is 40 points. There's a strong tackle from Robertson. McDermott couldn't get it clear and there'll be a bounce again in the centre. So Glenelg storming home to back-to-back -back premierships. Been a top performance by them today. David Kernahan is clear. So is Tony Hall. Well, ran into his own man there in Robin Kidney, but still had enough time to get it back to Kernahan. Kernahan gets one away. Chance for Maynard. Back to McDermott. They're conceding ground, but they've got possession. Donovan a long way up. Boots it in towards the square. Seabones at the back. Seabones got it. Switch from fullback has gone to centre half forward. Pressure's off, and Seabone has taken another mark and the chance to boot his third. It will be the base 20th. Seabone normally very accurate, but that's not a good attempt. He's missed comprehensively. A point only. 19 7 the base. North are 11 14, but they've got it well and truly wrapped up. Have they ever? It's of little consequence. Booting points at this stage of proceedings. The Bays won by 57 points last year. They lead by 41 at the moment. I wonder whether they'll beat that score. Robertson's going to get the free or the mark on the half-back line. He plays off. Had a couple of brilliant goals, solo performances early, but hasn't been able to sustain it. Riley in there is Klump. The long handball red. Thought about a handball, but it was a Bay player. Puts out the pass to half-forward line. Matthew Campbell. Out wide is Jarman. Darren type. Or the handball is easily covered. Puts out the pass, Kernahan. Now Stringer is 40 metres on the clear on the half forward line. There is not a North Adelaide player within an acre of him. He gets the ball casually, puts out the pass on the lead is Copping, and that's where the ball all ends. Copping in the left forward pocket. Simons won it. Everybody wants it. Corns wants it. The Bay's excited now. <laughs> They're going to win a premiership. But Copping, who was in a lot of doubt during the week and took a heavy knock in the third quarter. He's going to have a shot for the woodwork. The kick is going to go off the side of his boot. It's a shocker. Maybe the traction didn't work. Out of play on the full, Peter Bennett. 19-7 the Bays, North Adelaide 11-14. Bennett at full back now. Or no, in fact, in the back pocket. Kicks out, super carries in front. The red and run up wasn't that flash. Carries free kick. 50,538 people in attendance today. Peter Carey coming up now for his 18th kick. Been a big day for the giant ruckman. McDermott. D Max Cruz is even running down to the forward line. McDermott, the lead of Garton. Hart, Ferrets, now Wildy. Matt Campbell out in his own there in the pocket. Takes a good mark. Clomps the player. 
Salisbury got rid of it very quickly. There's Maynard. He hooks it back. Under the ball out there is Hart. He didn't uh, give himself a chance of marking it. Tony Hall now. Kidney. Love to kick a goal. Kidney, but that one's off hands. No. A free kick to Kidney. Well, seems to be all going the Bay's way. Yes, it was definitely there. Another late one. Robin Kidney, who uh, hasn't had a lot to do in this game, about to line up for the Bay's 20th goal. The Bays will get back-to-back -back prem premierships, the first time in their history, and it will be their fourth grand final victory. Kidney lines it up and puts it through. His first goal, the Bays 20 goals, 7, North Adelaide 11, 14. such a great game two weeks ago has put in a real shocker today out goes Parsons but Henwood brushes him aside goes short it's not well put Robertson intercepts goes onto the left foot has a bounce he's gonna lose it the tackle is there finally got the handball away but they did lose it in the finish David Kernahan Maynard yet another kick towards Alan Stringer Riley ran straight into him Pushes it at the back and goes and gets it. Riley, no one to kick it to, has gone straight to Kidney. Now to Maynard. This should be another goal. Adam Stringer takes it. No pressure at all. All of it is kick as a shocker. He's pushed it right across the face of goal. It's come off the hand of Baldy and gone through for a point. Yes, North Adelaide is a very tired and dispirited side. Well, talking about spirits, have a look at them there. Corns, what a coaching record. Back-to-back -back premierships, four seasons of coach, and coach two premierships, and South Adelaide into the final five on two occasions. Hart breaks away, finds Riley. The running player out wide is Jarman. He'll get it in the end. Darren Jarman loads through the half-forward line. He can go home with the ball if he likes. They come to meet him now, puts the kick underway. He hasn't had a big day with the boot, and it's not about to change right now. It's offline for North Adelaide's 15th point. 11-15 to Glenelg, 20 goals, 8. Henwood to boot out for the base, and uh, there they are, pretty happy crew there. Henwood comes to grandstand side. Mick Redden is there, so is Duthie. Played an outstanding game. Put the umbrella all over Grenville Dietrich in the first half and didn't give the big chap a smell. Marshall. 47 points, the margin at this point, or the lead. Jeff Blethen, Graham Corns. Antropus, acrobatic but ineffective. McDermott and Stephen Riley. 20 goals, 8 to 11-15. That's 28 scoring shots to 26. That really hasn't been the story of the game, though. Glenelg have been far too good. Matt Campbell will get a free kick. Came off the ground for a while early. Didn't appear to be injured. Darren Jarman's on his own, but he doesn't go to that player. He goes to his brother, who's obviously injured. Daryl Hart, possibly North Adelaide's best player. Poynton's got a chance to run into an open goal. He's a good forward player. He's just been at his third. Belated one for the North Adelaide side. 12-15 to the Bay's 20 goals eight. Well, Peter, it is a belated one, and it must be very, dis very disappointing for the North Adelaide players and their coach. But on the day that it counts, they've put in such a dismal performance. This was a fine build-up and a lovely goal from point and an easy goal running into the open one. But he's probably been their most effective forward. He's booted three, but it just hasn't been their day. Says it all, top star, and Studley Corns agrees with it. What a happy man. Seldom do you see a coach smile like that unless it's after a premiership. Gardon gets it out wide. The ball is thrown out now to Maynard. Maynard through the half forward line. Butters up back inside. They haven't got the legs to catch him. He puts it along. A, a lot 
for nothing there. Kimmy Hodgman and uh, Wayne Stringer there, delighted men. Another mistake in the back line for North Adelaide. Picking it up was Alan Stringer, and he's popped it through. He bounced that one through. Has the siren gone? Yes, it has. The siren is gone. The Bays have won back-to-back -back premierships for the first time. Graham Corns, the coach there. 21-9, North Adelaide 12-15. Peter Carey, who's led them in both premierships. Chris McDermott, There's a bit of blood there, but he wouldn't mind that. And Graham Collins. Well, sensational scenes last year, and uh, I can tell you what, they're pretty happy out there as well. The North Adelaide players leaving the ground this grand final. They didn't last year, they did stay on the ground in fact, but today they are leaving the ground and leaving it to the Bay players who've won two in a row. Well, Glenelg opened up brilliantly, booting 7-2 to 3-2 in the first quarter. One wondered whether North Adelaide were going against the breeze, perhaps to the non-scoring end, but they couldn't get back into it. At half time, Glenelg were 12-4 to North, 6-7. And they just powered on and on and on to a great victory. Corns is a happy man. And just listen to the crowd. Max Cruz, a happy man, coming over from uh, the Sydney side, Graham. He'd be a... A delighted man. Yes, uh, no doubt his first premiership peak is playing for the Swans or South Melbourne as they were all those years. Didn't produce even near a pennant and uh, he'll be beside himself with excitement. It really is a marvellous performance, Pete, when you work it out. They were the underdogs by a long chalk because they were handed, handled comprehensively in the second semi by the self-same North Adelaide team that took the field today. OK, they lost to Andrew Jarman, but one player doesn't make a side. And, um, you know, it was, well, I suppose it's poor return for effort for North Adelaide. You must feel sorry in some respects, uh, but you've got to put up on the day. If you don't, you don't win it. And, uh, Graham, uh, in Western Australia, Victoria and South Australia, yeah. the loser of the second semi-final has gone on to win the grand final. It's remarkable, Peter, because that's not the way football uh, evolves usually. Right. But uh, you must admit, yes, it's happened in the three major footballing states, and so forth. There's been a, so there's been a trend set uh, in 1986 that um, has never been set before, I'd say. I don't well, know, but, you know. No, I think it's, uh, well, you never know. I think it might have happened in Tasmania as well, but... Uh, right. Are there any players out there for the Bays that uh, you think may have played their last game? Well, uh, just Ross off Gibbs. the cuff. Ross Gibbs, I think, in his own way, might make a decision to go back to Perth. But then again, the excitement of playing in back-to-back -back premierships might persuade him one more year. Sure. Make it three in a row. <laughs> a hat-trick well, of right. premierships. You really can't say, Pete. I think there's more, more likelihood of North Adelaide players maybe stepping down from the breach. I think I heard uh, your co-commentator Ian Day say that Michael Redden, or was it David Darcy? Oh, Michael Darcy. Redden. Because of the problems he's had coming down from uh, Oruru, is it? To yeah, it's the Oruru farmer. It isn't easy. Now we'll pass down to Max Bashir, the president of the SANFL, for the presentations in the 1986 Grand Final. Of the South Australian National Football League. We've had a great season, and I'd like to thank the 10 league clubs for their wonderful participation in this season's activities. I would also like to pay a special tribute to the Woodville Football Club for their marvellous performances during the season. Before, before I proceed to make the presentations, I'd just like to say one or two words to you. Over the last few months, our league has been called upon to make some very important decisions for the future of our game. We have looked into those decisions very, very carefully, and I want you to be assured that our decision not to join the VFL in 1987 was not taken lightly. I want you to know 
but I have appreciated the complete support of the South Australian public in accepting the decision that we've taken. And I look forward to your support next year. The first presentation that we have to make today is for the Jack Oti medalist for the best player on the ground today, Tony Hall of Glenelg.
during the third quarter, I thought uh, North Adelaide made a bit of a mini comeback. But I watched in the booth, I was just lacking in their normal uh, uh, flow of the ball today. Oh, I couldn't put my finger on what I was that was missing, but their back line wasn't as destructive as they normally are. People weren't manning up on the Peter Maynards and the Tony Simons of the uh, of the Glenelg, uh, side early in the piece, and it, it spelt doom for them, Pete, quite frankly. It certainly did. Well, there they go, the Glenelg players and the coach uh, running around the outer side of the ground now on their victory lap. But stay with us, we're going to be right here till 5.30 when we'll go to Mount Panorama for the for the Hardy's heroes, but uh, stay with us right through till 5.30. We'll be talking to coaches, players, bring you all the locker room scenes, so stay with us. We'll be with it right up to 5.30, more after the break. back-to-back -back premierships last year in 85 and this year in 1986. 12-15 North Adelaide 21-9 the Bays and the players and Graham Corns have just completed their uh, their lap of honour and uh, there are a couple of guys in there that I don't think have played in, in uh, final sides before. I think Max Cruz and perhaps Kim Hodgman might be the first two. premiership team here. Yeah. Plenty of finals but no, no premierships till now so Kim Hodgman will be delirious Peter and uh, be. really he's beside himself I'd say. But uh, it was a marvellous effort, and there's Stephen Copping. That's his second premiership in a row. Certainly a great effort for Stephen Copping, uh, if, in fact, what we heard during the week was true, and yeah. I think it probably was. Yep, Just to I'd get onto that field was fantastic. A courageous performance, Pete. I mean, his courage has always been his forte, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. He knows how to go for the, the hard ball, and uh, there's David Kerner here. He played a top game, Pete. He'd be in my first seven or eight. Yes. The base has so many good players, you know. Uh, I, I totally agree with the... Uh, uh, the, the, the announcement of Tony Hall getting best on ground by the Scribes. I guess that's the Scribes at the side, mm. that one. Uh, six goals from centre-half forward is just a marvellous performance. Mm. Closely followed by Peter Maynard. I think his game was superb. And, uh, his first half was fantastic. Yep, yeah. and, and he wasn't missing in the last half either. Uh, he kicked a goal, he thought, in the last quarter, which was a little bit of humorous. Gave a touch of humour to the day. <laughs> he, he reached for the skies, and Chris McDermott thought it was a goal also, because he lifted him up there like a Statue of Liberty to hit the post. <laughs> and, and Peter Tony. was completely deflated for a couple of minutes. Yeah, Tony Hall, of course. The, uh, the Jack Odie medalist. That, uh, that is a great honour to win that medal mm. uh, after uh, one of Australia's greatest ever coaches. Tony Hall, six goals. Outstanding. And what about Tony Simon's great? Oh, he played great so game. well. And you mentioned Maynard's first half in particular was, yes. uh, was Chris just Chris Duthie was a top player all day. The last quarter he was just impassable. Mm. He was brilliant. Well, we'll have a look at some of the highlights of, uh, of this great game. There, there were plenty of them. The first goal of the match, would you believe, went to North Adelaide. Tony Andrews. That's true. And at this stage... North seemed to have more of the play, uh, and they were throwing the ball around better than Glenelg. They seemed to be, you know, a side that were going on with the job from the second semi. And uh, it would take a very good judge to say that Glenelg were going to win by, what, eight goals coming into oh. the day at that stage, because it just seemed to be North all the way. Mm. And uh, it just turned around. Peter Maynard, the, 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 well, we mentioned before, he was the, the man that set the thing rolling in the first half, Pete. Did all over have... the place he was, just but everywhere. He, I, I don't think I've seen a player... Um, Unmarked? That, well, well <laughs> yeah, but you'd back him in. Uh, kicking a goal on the run is oh, right. really his forte, isn't it? He's yeah. just outstanding. He is. Now, here's David Robertson. Uh, well, I, I guess he had plenty of touches in the first half, Pete. They weren't always the explosive sort of things that Robertson's used to doing. That was a top goal. That, that um, dragged him back within about four or five at that stage. Well, the black mark you had to give him, though, was, was that his opponent was Maynard. Right. And, uh, I mean, there are opponents in this game, but uh, 
They didn't seem to be manning up at all, but Maynard hurt them a lot more than Robertson hurt Oh, Lanelle. sure. Oh, there's, no, there's no comparison, Peter, quite frankly. He was uh, he was out there playing his first game for a few weeks. He was excited about it and probably just lost touch with the bloke mm. that he was on. Well, this is how Peter Maynard played his game, and uh, he was a light in the first quarter and in the second quarter. He kicked goal after goal, and uh, they were all brilliant ones. And he always seemed to be loose. He just is a remarkable uh, exponent of what you might call the will of the wisp type football. That was a classic goal. Oh, yes. He got buried as soon as he kicked that. And, uh, but that was a, a team crushing goal. When I say team crushing, mm. the opposition were crushed by that. They just got within, say, four goals of Glenelg with a silly chance of coming in three down. Peter Monard reacted, kicked the goal over his head virtually, and uh, that was, go that was uh, Glenelg's sixth goal. Monard and again, and. Uh, they're going to the other end now, Pete. The other end of the ground, and uh, uh, Kim Hodgman uh, fed it out to Peter. A left foot snap, which floated and kept going and going. And they are very difficult goals to kick. Well, left it's the main art specialty, a left or right foot, he can certainly kick them. But uh, Tony Hall was probably their best forward. And after watching that in the first half, you'd probably think it was Maynard. But uh, Tony Hall was an outstanding player. And by the way, as you probably saw, he is the Jack Avey medalist for 1986. And Ian Day is uh, down in the locker room with a pretty happy, I would guess, coach of the, uh, of the, of the Glenelg side, Graham Corns. Congratulations, Studley. Back-to-back premierships. You must be unbelievably happy. Well, it's a terrific feeling, Ian. I mean, last year was good, but there were a few doubting Thomases last year who thought we couldn't do it without a couple of key players, and they were good players for us. But this year, the boys have really had to work for it, and uh, today just saw the fruition of all their efforts. That first quarter, Studley, have the Bays played as well in a quarter as they did in that first quarter? Particularly since uh, the grand final. No, I thought the start of the second quarter for the first ten minutes there, but seven minutes of, of footy in the start of the second quarter was just ph phenomenal. And what about Tony Hall, Peter Carey? Uh, Peter Carey, sensational. Last two thirds of the season been fantastic. Tony Hall, he was always going to have an advantage today if, if uh, he got on top early because their their back line is not overly big, and we had enough big players up there to to, to prevent them from using a true centre half back on him. So. Yeah, that was one work that he played so well. You appeared to have the North Adelaide defence uh, running around in circles. Were you using any particular plan or was it just the looseness coming from upfield that made them out of position? No, we wanted everyone, we wanted players around the fall of the ball. That's what we worked for, players around the fall of the ball and it happened. Congratulations, Dudley. You've got a big night coming up. Well done. What's that? Four, four final series in four years as coach. You're famous. <laughs> Congratulations. Back back, beat that. Well done. Yeah. Simon, how do you feel about it? Good, Ian. Unbelievable. It's what fantastic. Are you, what are you going to do tonight now, mate? Now, tell me honestly. I'll be getting on this stuff tonight. There's nothing more certain than a Glenelg victory. When did you think you were going to win it honestly now? I thought when we got up in the middle of the second quarter, we were playing good footy, and we don't get big headed about a footy. We just do the right things, and I knew they wouldn't get back into it. Tony, when you got that pass from Maynard going through centre-half forward on the fly, you were flat out. You must have dreamed about passes like oh, that. It's just great. Actually, Peter gave me two out of a three, so he really looked after me today. It was fantastic. He played a great game, Tony sure Hall. Did. Yeah, Hawley, fantastic. Everyone really put in when we had to put in. Tell me, the Bays got out of, out of the blocks in a flash. What made you so G'd up and going so well? Well, we had a very quiet build-up during the week. We didn't worry about everything that was going on around the place. We just settled down, knew what we had to do, and went about our job and did it. Congratulations. A great performance. Thanks, Have Daisy. a big night, mate. Hey, I will. David Darcy. <laughs> we can't find David yet. He's probably uh, been trampled in the stampede. But, uh, yeah, they're pretty happy down there. And uh, as well they might be. They played a wonderful game. And uh, we were just chatting a little while ago. And uh, we might get on to a little bit later. But we'll just touch on it now. Where did North go? Having been beaten by Glenelg in the last three grand finals. But more particularly in the last two. Well, they spoke about um, the golfer having a monkey on his back. I think North have got the Glenelg monkey on their back, Pete, in grand finals. Mm. It just doesn't happen for them. For whatever reason, the ball won't run and, and players aren't in position to take uh, what you might call effective hand passes. And the, the, the familiarity they, they breed between their backline players was missing. Mm. They weren't finding each other. And they're so good at that. All of a sudden today, they were just missing. So what the answer is, I dashed if I know. And, of course, McNoonan won't know. Well, we've found David Darcy. In fact, he's down there with Ross Gibbs. Julie. Ross, congratulations. And Julie. Julie Gibbs, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very much. Is that your first? Grand final? No, no, we won it last year. We've, we've become legends uh, today, so it was a huge effort by the boys. We were the underdog, and we you know, took it nice and easy and uh, showed it at the end, and uh, it was a huge effort. It's bigger than last year, I can tell you. The first quarter set it up for you. It was a magnificent first quarter. Yeah, well, it was one of those unbelievable things, I think. 
you know, we surprised ourselves the way we played in that first quarter. We were expecting North to hit us with everything because they've had the week's break. But, of course, we got the first break. We had a bit of luck on our side, and we just took over. It was fantastic. Cross, I want to just want to talk about one little part of the game. Julie, you probably saw it too. There was a ball-throwing incident. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, I cut, well, I cut one early, but uh, by a, a play of it, it's just one of those things. And uh, I th sort of got a bit upset for a change and uh, just sort of throw the ball at him. And, but that was one of those things I was uh, disciplined for. I got taken off, so... I knew what I'd done wrong, but anyway, who cares? It doesn't matter now. Congratulations. Magnificent effort. Thank Thanks. you, Ross. Thank you, Julie. Thanks very much, Dave. Oh, that's a bit upsetting. It's a, it's it's just uh, offside at our nickname of him. He used to be Mr Cool. Yeah. I think I'll have to think of another name for he, him he, now. He lost his cool. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe that. But... <laughs> Congratulations, the old man of football, and you've done it again! <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a fantastic effort. Uh, you know, I'm just so proud of the boys. They've worked really hard this year. Uh, I think we've had to work a lot harder this year than we did last year, and uh, to come up trumps in this game after being the rank outsiders, you know, I'm just so proud of them. It was fantastic. Peter, you must be so pleased with your own performance. You must be on the yippy beans or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, I haven't got many games left. I've got to make the most of it, mate, I tell you. Well, now, what about next year? Obviously, you've got to go for a three in the row. We've got the cup here. Yeah, I'll be fronting up next year, and, uh, boy, we'll be giving it our best shot. And uh, It's a long way away yet, but uh, we'll, be, we'll be giving it a whirl. Super congratulations, a magnificent performance, and the Bays are going to have a big night tonight. Well Thanks done, so Peter Carey and the Bays. Back now to Peter Marker. Well, I tell you what, the Glenelg Football Club and Graham Corns and all the players owe a lot to that man. He's been... Truly outstanding. In fact, Graham, you recognise his great leadership qualities when you appointed him as captain. That's right. Look, no guy deserves success more than Peter Carey. He's got a heart as big as himself. Mm. He's a man that uh, he's got a complete humility. He'll do whatever you say, you know, and he buries himself for the sake of the club. And I just feel great for Peter Carey. Have you ever seen him play better than he has in the last, Gee, say, two or three months? It's hard to put a finger on, Pete. I can't think offhand. No, he's at his peak. Isn't that silly? The man That's amazing. in the twilight of his career, 400 games. He's 50. <laughs> <laughs> he could. He's been a great player. And congratulations, Glenelg.